Ladies and gentlemen, give me one second. Let me put this here. Share this with the Let's try it. Y'all give me one second here. Popping in, do a little chat tonight. And this uh we'll give it a little time because this unannounced, and I'm not gonna be too long, hopefully around um, hopefully around 30 minutes or so. Just kind of wanna talk about this situation that I seen today. And one of the guys, I, I follow one of the guys from the podcast, um, Earn Your Leisure, and he followed me, uh, Rashad, and I had DM'd him after I saw his post, what he was talking about, and this something, and what he was talking about on there about how there are people, you know, white guys who tap into the hip hop culture and dress a certain way and you know have parties and invite these people and i always see these things and as y'all know some of you know this and some of you some of you know what i'm talking about but not everybody will understand because it's different ways that we look at the world it's different ways to see the world and there's a quote by, I believe it's Anais Nin, but it also is uh, Stephen R. Covey is where I heard it from. And he says, we don't see the world for what it is. We see the world for what we are. And essentially, our lenses helps us see things a certain way. And it depends on your root and it depends on your motivation. And it also depends on your history and your biography, which determines how you see the world. So for me, being from Polk County, Florida, and having the Ku Klux Klan come to my middle school and do their little protests or march or whatever they were doing, and we're out there on the basketball courts and on the fields, they standing out on the field, we on the outside basketball courts and you know, we picking up rocks, we throwing rocks at them and people who people cussing them out and all of that. We didn't approach them. They didn't approach us. But I probably was in sixth grade or something. And so that was kind of interesting to see the Ku Club plan come to my school because I'm, I'm 38 years old. So it's just not something. And then me being in West Virginia and riding up, I was up like on a mountain kind of or I was up elevated and I'm looking down and I see a yard of like a people in a bunch of white look like white robes out there in the backyard and this was in probably 2005 and i remember talking to a caucasian young lady in college and we sitting out we standing outside of walmart and we standing out there outside of her car talking and he, this this little pickup truck drove by and then they circled and they drove back by and they turned up their radio real loud and they were playing a song from the movie American History X. And I watched that movie and the song was saying, and we washed ourselves in ends blood. And I'm like, wow. And I caught the lyrics and just kind of going through those experiences and talking to a couple of, you know, Caucasian young ladies in high school and both of them coming to me and telling me, hey, my dad said I can't, you know, date a black guy. And me being 38 and having gone through these things, you know, growing up and just seeing the racial divide when I wasn't raised like that, but I was made aware of it. 
And one of the things that I've been noticing is what a lot of people don't understand is that, especially in men, and but it's also in women as well. It's also in a lot of women as well, but it is really ingrained. It's very ingrained in in the white race that blacks and other you know races are less than and it takes a certain type of person who is white to have a set of experiences and be raised in a certain way to see beyond to be seen to see beyond the color lines and a lot of people don't understand that but i have close friends who are white males and when we really get to talking i realize they still are prejudiced and i mean close friends friends that you know we done done business together we done stayed the night at the house we done went out of town we done been around and i and when we really get to talking i realize they still see black people as less than and this just the reality of it and so i have been quiet about this stuff because i see stuff that 90 percent of people don't see but it's because i'm sitting and talking with my creator and because i keep my influences very limited so i really don't watch a lot of stuff and listen to a lot of stuff and no matter what my financial situation looks like i don't get desperate in the sense of just trying to hit the lotto overnight and a lot of people when they get desperate monetarily or their money start to change they stop seeing character and all they see is currency all they see is money and so i've been noticing for a long time and i knew for a, a long time that and i couldn't understand it but i knew for a long time that individuals like uh grant cardone and his likes don't really care in a real sense for black people but they see an opportunity and what you have to realize is that the black dollar is the most coveted dollar on the face of this earth because black people come through especially in america black people come through so much pain come through the most pain but had the greatest disadvantage coming out of slavery and i heard a guy the other day talking um patrick bet david now this gentleman charges thirty thousand dollars an hour is what his team told me for a for a coaching session now he has not done anything in his life that is you know so great it's just that he online and he he's he talks and you know and i i like the following he had built and i wanted to learn what he did so i reached out for um coaching and they told me thirty thousand dollars for one hour in person and twenty thousand dollars if you want to talk on like a a zoom and so when i charge 250 dollars after having made millions of dollars doing what i do as an author and a speaker and a teacher i charge 250 dollars and people turn their nose up and here this gentleman twenty thousand dollars his team told me twenty thousand dollars for one hour and then my partner told me about a book uh, i can't remember the the psychology of money or something like that and i reached out to the author because my partner really liked the book my partner is a white guy and i asked him and he said for in-person coaching twenty five thousand dollars and if you want to do something on zoom seventy five hundred dollars for one hour now this is the way that most people who are not black in a lot of ways value themselves and so when i start to look around and i start to see this one of the things i noticed now what they're talking about with the grant cardone situation is that it's a, a post it's a, from an old post and I, I saw the video 
is looks like what it's what I seen. And he was talking to the guy I just mentioned, Patrick Bet David. He was talking to him, which he is of the same cloth that Patrick Bet David. And it's a lot of these people, but he's not like Caucasian. He's not white American. He come from you know a tough situation, but a lot of people discredit black people in america and patrick bet david is one of those people who discredits the black struggle because his family came from a war-torn country to america on their own volition by their own choice this is their land of dreams and so he thinks that black people should not have any excuse and that we had enough time to be where he is because of what his family comes from and that's the mentality that a lot of people who come to America as their land of dreams try to equate their scenario to black people when we did not choose to come to America. Like Malcolm X said, we ain't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. We didn't choose America. We were stolen. We were sold from our country by people who were in greed, people who wanted money, which is people who look like us probably sold us into slavery for money, which the love of money, the Bible don't say money is the root of all evil. The Bible say the love of money is the root of all evil. So America is not a land of dreams for black people. It's the land of blood, the land of nightmares. Whereas people who come to America from another country and they make it, I remember Zig Ziglar said that immigrants are four times as likely to become millionaires than natural born citizens. And the reason being is because an immigrant comes to America with a vision, a plan and a dream. But when you are born here and you do not feel like this is your home, you do not feel welcome. You do not feel comfortable then you are living in a land of nightmares and you're living from this arrested place in your spirit that feels like you are not supposed to be here. And that's what we deal with. And so dealing with that, when you're dealing with that, you're not going to be at your best because you're not hopeful. And so what's happening now is black people are getting in a position to get money, but without financial literacy. Our gifts are making room for us and we're being elevated. But what we're, what is happening, though, is we're being preyed upon. So today I got a message from uh, the Bentley dealership and they sell Rolls Royce. and they the the salesman wrote me about a rolls royce cullinan that his client ordered but is no longer going to buy because the car bubble is bursting and the market is not in the best place and this is not a time to buy a rolls royce because the interest rate they're offering for great credit is 10 percent so it's not the time to buy so i had three individuals at the rolls royce dealership write me today all in separate messages trying to sell me a car at 10 percent interest with great credit because as black people we are seen as rich dummies and in a lot of cases, we are technically rich dummies in the sense of not having financial literacy, not being taught about the stock market and not being taught about finances and not being taught about investing. So what happens is people are coming and they are given a little bit of gain. But it's very similar to the game that the fake that the single male relationship coaches are given. They give a little bit of game so that the part they don't give you is what they can run on you. And so here individuals and this one, I kind of knew 
that guys like Grant Cardone was full of it is because you got to start somewhere. And he was knocking single family homes. He was saying, don't buy a single family home, buy a multi-unit. Knowing that when you're trying to build wealth and that when you get started, you can't afford to buy a four unit place. He was saying buy 10 units. If you waiting to buy 10 units, you're never going to be able to buy 10 units if you don't start somewhere. By the time you're able to buy 10 units, you you probably about dead. Instead of just you could buy one house at a time. And yes, it ain't the world's greatest thing, but it's something. And that's what I did. I bought one and the lady paid rent every month. And I did it out of purpose. She was a single mom of three. I gave her December off. Don't pay me no rent. She said, Tony, I've never had a landlord that gave me December off. But everything I do, I do it with purpose. And I wasn't trying to get rich. And then I was able to sell the house for more than I bought it for. So it worked out. And that's how it became my real estate strategy. I'm going to rent it out. I'm going to do it at a fair market price. And I'm going to get December off. And that's dumb to a lot of people. But when you're doing a thing with purpose, God going to make the difference. Now this person who I gave December off so that they could take care of their kids for Christmas will never, ever be late on a rent payment again because of the grace I showed them. If they got the raw Peter to pay Paul, they're going to do that because of the, the love that I showed them. So I took a different approach to it. And also, a lot of times it's people of color. And when he said that, what it was is, let me debase you and make you feel worthless. Let me make you feel worthless. And let me make you feel small because all you can afford is one, a single family unit for your rental property. But I got this fund over here that if you give me that money that you was going to get your little raggedy single family with, Give me that money and we buy an apartment. So now you get to be a, a owner of apartments. So don't create wealth for yourself where you have say so over how you do things and what you purchasing and you building a relationship with your tenants and you hands on and you can oversee your your investment. Don't do that. Bring me your money and let me invest your money, even though. My daddy did not do real estate. I don't come from real estate. I'm not a generational wealth person. I used to do drugs and be strung out and I was selling cars and then learn how to become a salesman. So now I'm using this reverse psychology, these sales tactics on you to make you feel small, to make you feel worthless, to make you feel less than. So now then you could put this money over here. And so that became the strategy. That became the strategy. And you remember the video that they showed that they showed um, it's online. It's going around line. It's like from old school video. And they showing the black people when we start to elevate and get some money. And the voiceover is saying, when you're selling to the when you're selling to the Negro, be very understanding that the Negro loves flashy things and the negro wants to prove that they have the ability to buy so if you're able to make the negro feel special or like they can afford this thing they will buy it and basically what it was saying and this is what i started to see when i would go places is that they would try to ignore me or make me feel like I didn't deserve to be in the place. And then I would overspend to prove that I got the money. And guess what? Multi-millionaires, basically billionaires, fall for this. Shaquille O'Neal said it out his mouth that he bought two Rolls Royce Cullinans, $500,000 vehicles, because the man talked to him like he didn't have the money. Now, what Shaq did not realize is that he lost that battle that day, just like I done lost it. Because that man knew good and well that Shaq could afford that. 
but he got two five hundred thousand dollar sales on Shaq because he made Shaq feel small. Ain't nobody on the face of this earth could think that Shaquille O'Neal, who is on every other commercial, is broke. But that man intentionally, and the man probably saw that old school ad on social media because I seen it and I ain't really into social media like that, where they talking about how you sell to the Negro by debasing them. And I know because I got family and I got people around me and I done been in, in relationships with black women who, when we go into a store, is so many black people that say, I don't want to go in there unless I can buy something. Because we don't feel like we have the right to window shop. But I have literally, and I started to tell my wife this, I started to tell her, I said, man, man, bump that. I'm going in here and I'm trying on everything in the store. And if I don't want it, I'm walking out because that's their job. Their job is to sell this to me. And if they can't sell it to me, if I don't want it, I'm walking out. And you know why I took that approach? Because when I walked in the store one day, I take and, and buy every pair of shoes for my wife. She'll try on a pair of shoes. The shoe might cost $1,500 and I buy every color. But I sat there and watched white women who look like they got money now, who I could tell got money. Cause they talking about their vacation. They done went all the Ibiza. They done went the Mykonos. They done went the Mars. They done went everywhere. I will watch these white women try on every pair of shoes and get up and walk out of there. Whereas black people, we feel guilty to exercise our right to have agency over our own money. We feel guilty to walk in somewhere and window shop and say, ah, I'm okay. We feel guilty to go to the lot and test drive the car and say, ah, I need some time to think about it. We feel like we have to buy right away. And so what I seen with the Grant Cardone thing, when I first saw, when I heard his tone and how he talked and he was talking about, hey, you rappers, you athletes, you know, I got the big boy AP. I got the big boy AP, but I buy this out of money that my money has made. You got you got the big AP, but you spending that out of your hard earned money. I'm buying mine out of out of my uh, passive income or out of my uh, investment money. And then he in the G wagon. I got the big boy G-Wagon just like you. And basically what he was trying to do is appeal to the black athletes and appeal to the rappers and make them feel stupid for spending their money on an Audemars or for spending their money on a G-Wagon out of their hard-earned money that they sacrificing their body for or they using a gift to earn because they didn't invest it into a property with him and then get a payout, a dividend check, or a payout, and then buy the watch out of that. So basically what he was saying is, is don't take and spend your money yourself. Bring your money over here to me. Let me invest it for you. Knowing he have no control over the real estate market. So you can go and give a million dollars to Grant Cardone, and he could go and buy an apartment complex and the real estate bubble burst and your million dollar gone. And what we don't realize is that in these real estate investment trusts, when you look at the fine print, the money that's invested, the money that's raised, he get a cut right off the top. He, he get a cut right off the top. And then the rest him and his team choose what to invest in. You don't get a say-so on what's invested in. They get to choose when to buy. They get to choose when to sell. They get to choose what to do with your money. And this ain't even people who come from real estate like Donald Trump done filed bankruptcy a million times and won't show tax returns and they got billion-dollar loans. So just because a person come from something don't mean they got more knowledge than you. 
because a lot of stuff is just common sense. And so now when they buy the property and they get profits, they get their profits off the top. And then after taking their profits off the top, then the rest is split between everybody else. And the thing about it is when we had a black man who had the opportunity to raise money in a fund and do the right thing, still didn't turn out right. So when I seen that black people started getting black people started getting taken advantage of and this is what i start to see when i start to see grant cardone when he brought on floyd mayweather see floyd mayweather is he to the white person to the black people we respect his grind i don't went to floyd mayweather training camp and i don't been to his fights there's no fighter that is better than Floyd. There's no fighter that worked harder than Floyd. Floyd fooled a lot of people. He really smart. He looks like he make his opponent think that he doing what they doing. So he'll eat a Big Mac on the camera. You know, he'll 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 make you think that he do what you do, but you could tell. I could tell because I used to sell weed, but I could tell Floyd don't smoke. I could tell Floyd don't get drunk. I could tell Floyd work out really hard, but when Grant Cardone brought Floyd on there, and I just seen the flyer with TD Jakes on the flyer with Grant Cardone, and then he get the MI the, the MLM black people from the multi-level marketing, and he bring them in there. What black people are seen as with money is rich dummies. Because people know that even as millionaires, we have the least amount of financial literacy because of what we come from that we got to be very intentional about our financial literacy we have to be very intentional about that and so that is known a lot of us who come from i don't come from the the deepest 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 trenches and i didn't know what a fico score what a credit score was until about 25 years old and i didn't know what stocks were until like college i learned about it in high school from my friend who told me his family got ripped from stocks but i still didn't understand it or know what it was and i come from a house i didn't live in the government housing i didn't live in the project project like i come from a two-parent home and still had very little to no financial literacy so what is being done right now is black people are being preyed on for investments into these funds and investments into these businesses. And that's why they had a documentary called Broke, where it's talking about, and it's showing all of these black athletes who done lost millions of dollars because they invested in something that somebody brought them knowing that they didn't understand it and they didn't know what they were doing. And me, I take a very simple approach. If I don't understand it, if it don't make sense to me, if I don't, if I can't be hands on, I don't want to have nothing to do with it. So I take and I move my own stocks. I take and do my own investment and I just go get the knowledge. And if it exceeds my knowledge, then it's not for me. If I can't understand it, Albert Einstein said, if you can't explain it to a six year old, you don't understand it well enough. If I cannot understand it, I I am I will rather have my money in a shoebox than to put my money into somebody else's hands and let them invest it for me. Because one thing I've learned about humans is that you cannot trust a human, and especially with money. You can't trust your mama, you can't trust your daddy, you can't trust your child. My eight-year-old son ran up a bill on me. And he loved me. And I told him, do not spend no more money. And he sat right there and ran up a bill. Ran up a bill. My own child. I'm talking about family. Your, your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your cousin. You can't trust a human with your money. You got to get the knowledge for yourself. And you got to learn how to move your money yourself. A CPA, a CPA, an assistant, a bookkeeper, 
can't touch my books, can't cannot touch my account, cannot touch my account, can't have the only access they get is viewer access, cannot have access to send money, to cut a check, to pay a bill, nothing. But what they take and do with a lot of black people, especially the athletes, especially the athletes and the rappers, they age it, who is typically a white man. Or they manager, who a lot of times is a white man, they take and make these people of wealth feel like they are dumb and like they don't know what they're talking about. And they throw some terms out there that they know they're not going to understand. And then these people take and turn over their bank account to other people. And the next thing you know, these people are sitting there paying their bills and paying their family bills out of these people account like they say Usain Bolt and somebody had access to his account or, or he or he investing with a firm or something and 12 million dollars 12 million of his dollars gone just disappeared off the face of the earth somebody just said Usain Bolt and Sharif knows what she's talking about now because she was just telling y'all how these real estate trusts how they get paid say so she say he get a cut off the top during acquisition, off the top during the holding period, and off the top when they sell. Sharif telling y'all now. She's telling y'all. And see, this is the thing that we don't know because we don't read fine print. And so this, and I know people. Now I got clients and I got associates who deal with these Grant Cardones of the world. And they eat up every single word that's said. They eat up every single word that's said. And I just sit there and I'm going to tell you, to be honest with you, we got a lot of black people that's doing it too. We now have a lot of black men that's doing the same thing that the white men doing. They preying on the lack of financial literacy that black people have. And a lot of the black men, they learning this much from the white man and then they becoming the one-eyed man in the land of the blind. And so they come in and give in just a little bit of game. And then they finna sell you on this three thirty five hundred dollar course. They're going to give you a little bit of game stuff you ain't never heard of. And they finna hit you for thousands of dollars for this course or for thousands of dollars for this ticket. And it's just a little bit of game when all of this stuff, you could go learn it for yourself. You could go learn it for yourself and be in control of your money. It's a couple that they got a course for $97. The course is so cheap. And they on YouTube, they call Our Rich Journey. When you go on their YouTube channel, Our Rich Journey, this couple, they done took, they lived off 30% of their income and invested 70% of their income and retired millionaires by the age of 40 and moved out the country. They give you so much game on their channel for free that you easily could go to vanguard start your roth ira then direct your money into the vtsax the vanguard index fund direct your money right there and just put your max it out every year with your six thousand dollar contribution for your next whatever 20 30 40 years how many ever years you got to do it if you 18 and you got all this time and just with that simple strategy, a simple strategy of maxing out your Roth IRA from the age of 18 to the age of 62 or 67 when you could withdraw, or maybe it might be 59 and a half that you could withdraw, you're going to be sitting pretty. But we taking and we are we trying to get rich quick. And I'm going to tell you a show that I watch that you need to watch. And if you got Peacock, you can watch this show. If you don't have Peacock, then if you don't have Peacock, then um, YouTube got some of it. It's called American Greed. That's why I do not give a single soul. I do not give a single soul my money because I watch American Greed. It's called Our Rich Journey. And that's their free promo just because I'm just, you know, I'm saying names tonight. Y'all know I don't normally say names. And so it's called Our Rich Journey. And now if you watch American Greed, you realize that Bernie Madoff, Bernie Madoff looked like he was doing the right thing and like he had it all together. 
that's somebody that he could, Bernie Madoff could have got any of our money. He could have got any of our money. But when you watch these companies, you watch these people start out a lot of times honest and end up greedy. And I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm going to tell you what happened. We get to a place and what, what black people do is get a job or get into something and make some money. And then they industry change. And then when they industry change, they get desperate. They get desperate and then they go to these individuals who are like a Grant Cardone. And because of our inferiority complex, because of our self-hate, because of our lack of knowledge, we then assume that this person knows more than us when they actually don't. We then assume that this person is better than us. See, once somebody tell me that they snort, that they done snorted powder, because I used to be in the streets, you can't come, you can't touch my money with a hundred foot pole. If you tell me you done ever played with your nose, I might take a chance on somebody who done smoked some grass. But if you tell me you done ever played with your nose, mm -mm. You can't get a you can't get a red cent from me because one thing I know about addiction, you got to beat that addiction every day for the rest of your life. One thing I know about addiction is you could be playing with your nose and can't nobody tell it unless they done been around it and seen it. So I could see how some people be on their podcast zooted, be all the way gone. No sir, no sir, ball. Do not tell me you was a drug addict. That's, I'd rather you tell me you used to sell drugs like the gentleman say he used to sell drugs. And then the black man, then he start um, a fund and then everybody got all these complaints. And I'm, and I'm thinking like this right here. Um, the brother Jay Morrison, God bless him. God bless him. He tried. He tried to climb out of poverty, tried to do the right thing on not the brother. He trying to do right. But that right there just did not make any sense to me. And I don't understand why this stuff don't make sense to people. So the brother start a fund and you could buy in at $500. So I'm kind of like, okay, if you could get in at $500. So if, 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 if 11,000 people put in $500, that's 5.5 million. So in that 5.5 million, if a, a complex is bought for $5.5 million, and how many units is in a $5.5 million place? So now if you got this $5.5 million place and the funds say that the person get 10% off the top, so now we finna take off minus $550,000 right off the top. So now it's $4.95 million. Then you got to go buy some. But you don't get no choice on what's finna get bought. So now something could get bought for $3 million and then the market crash and now it's immediately worth $2 million. So now a million dollars have been lost. So to recover a million dollars, ain't no telling how long that's going to take. And then if, if we got a $3 million asset, if we got a $3 million asset and this asset is bringing in Let's say the asset bringing in $30,000 a month. Let's say it's 30 units and, and, and the 30 units is $1,200 a month. That's $36,000 a month. $36,000 a month. Now, off that $36,000, you're going to have to put up 20% of that. So just for repairs and all of that, minus $3,600, minus another $3,600. So now you at $28,800. Now, if you don't bought this apartment complex out of this fund, you got to pay the staff. So now you paying the staff. So, so now a month, you, you coming off salary. Let's say you got a, a handyman. You got two office managers. Just right there, three staff. Let's say you give them $2,000 a month. You minus 6000 uh, what I took off, 600.
you at 22,800 a month. So now let's say that's the profit. If the company get their profit right off the top, 10,000, you taking off another 2,200. So now you at $20,000. So now you got $20,600 as the money that came in. But now you divide that by 11,000 people, you getting a dollar and 87 cent a month. So, so even the brother, God bless him. But when he came out with his fund and I seen people get in for $500, man, I'm not going to flush my $500 down the toilet. I'm not finna do that because you finna have so many people in this fund. So literally people sitting around there getting a dollar and 87 cent, a dollar and 87 cent a month. Now I invested into a fund and I didn't read the fine print. I invested into a real estate in investment trust, put thousands in there. And then I just went to feeling funny about it. I went back. I said, man, I'm finna take my money out. Even if I lost a little bit, I'm finna take my money out. I go on there to find print and say, I can't touch my money for five years. So the way it's set up, they they holding your money. So now they holding your money. I'm like, man, I could have took that money and put that down on a, a, a loan for my own property that I'm managing. And now these people sitting on my money. I said, oh, man, I should have read the fine print. And so this is what's happening. So when I start to have people call me talking about, and I got clients, and they just swell by. They swell by these individuals, like, like the Grant Cardones of the world. And I'm like, man, y'all just y'all don't have spiritual vision. Like, you can't see somebody's spirit. Like, I could tell just with the arrogance that he taught with, with the bravado he taught with, that, that he not for me. And then I also could tell is that I also could tell that the jet and all the cars and all the watches, this money was not made before the fund was started. And the money that was made before the fund was started come off of debasing you, demeaning you, and then selling you a $5,000 or $10,000 course. And then what they take and do is they take and build an audience by saying stuff that has a lot of shock value. They build an audience. And I got clients that have paid $25,000, $30,000, $35,000 to be interviewed by these people. So they, they pay money to be interviewed by these people to build a little audience. But they're going to sit down with these people like the Grant Cardone's. And he don't even know who they are. He don't respect their business. He don't respect them, but it's another check. And then I sit with some of their friends and they'll just pull prices out they behind. They'll pull prices out they behind of what they're going to charge or stuff they're going to charge. And literally, I, I went to use a software from a white gentleman who was friends with Grant Cardone. And the man told me to use this membership software. I'm going to charge you $50,000 to sign up. This your sign up cost. $50,000. And then 20% every month. Uh, yeah, LeVon, I saw, I saw a flyer with TDJ's face on there. But again, if that bag right, and the thing about it is, a lot of people don't have spiritual discernment. A lot of people don't have to be up in the pulpit without spiritual discernment. But if that bag right, a lot of these folks going to get up there for money. It's all this kind of stuff I turn down. Alicia, God bless you. I turn it down. If it don't sit right with my spirit, I turn it down. I get offered $100,000 a month for people to run my Facebook page and post viral videos every day. And I turn, I've been turning it down for years. And they send me a list of all the black celebrities that they run their page, their Facebook page. You, you look now, as a lot of them is um rappers who not really that hot right now, RB singers who not hot right now. When you see their Facebook page, start looking at up some of these old school people, their Facebook page, and you see them little viral videos, 
you see the uh it's like of a cat cat stuck in a tree of you know somebody blessing the old lady with some money those videos that those videos are ran by a media agency who when you click that video it take you to a website that got a bunch of ads all over the website the website giving your phone and your computer viruses and it got a bunch of ads and that is all just a money play and they taking these people brand that they done built over these years and because these black folks done fell on hard times they then sell out their brand and run their brand into the ground or turn they they, they brand into a meme brand a meme posting brand just to make some money and i turned it down i turned it down and i'm like hundred thousand dollars a month i need it now but i'm not finna run my brand in the ground over that and so here i am i'm seeing top leaders black folks i'm seeing black folks going to these individuals just because of the color of their skin just because of the color of their skin that's it just because of self-hate the stuff they talking about is you could do one google search and know everything they said you could go on a youtube channel and learn every single thing they know every single because that's where they learned it from they just learned it from google and youtube they went to youtube university and google university and they ain't doing nothing that is a strategy because you got to think about this what is a strategy what is the strategy of me taking everybody else's money and going and me taking everybody else's money because i'm a salesman and then going and buying an apartment complex that is not rocket science what you but see what we don't do is we could go to every one of our family members the family member with the most integrity and you still might lose your money the family member with the most integrity can go and pool money of the family and go buy a 10 unit and when the check come in to the family account family trust or whatever type of business structure you got set up can cut out them split that money amongst the family and it's in your family in your name in your family name and you got control over it we won't even do that with family and we will go and give thousands of dollars some people giving millions of dollars to somebody we met on the internet to somebody we met on the internet that we do not know and as soon because i transition out of the little street phase as soon as I heard Buddy say he used to be an addict, I can't, I can't I ain't judging you. I ain't judging you. But one thing I understand about addiction, you're not finna get that dollar from me. No sir, Bob. No sir. And see me, I'll take a life by my money. So that's why you're not finna to get a dime. And when you and when you look at these seminars these seminars i'm gonna tell you what they do and this is why a lot of people a lot of people are dumb because they will go on tonygassesacademy.com and see a course for 25 dollars and think that it's no value in it because i charge 25 dollars they'll think it's no value in it but then they will go they will go and buy a course for five thousand dollars that is a compilation of google facts five thousand dollars to feel like they buying something and that's exactly how these people get rich they play on the psychology of if this costs a lot you're gonna think it's worth a lot and then what they do is they put so much content in the course that when you open the course is so daunting that you quit on yourself so now you blame yourself for failing and you forget that albert einstein said if you cannot explain it to a six-year-old 
you don't understand it well enough. That's why my courses are me on the camera talking straight to you with no graphics, with no pop-ups, with nothing going on. I'm giving you all meat and potatoes. No Caesar salad. I ain't even giving you no asparagus. I ain't giving you, I ain't giving you no wine on the side. I ain't pairing it with nothing. I'm giving you meat and potatoes. And it might be $25, $50. My most expensive course is the Life Coach Certification course. And the only reason why that course is $2,500 is because it's people charging $12,000 and they don't have 10% of the success I have as a coach. And they're charging $12,000. And do you know what? A lady who paid $12,000 hired me for a one-on-one -on -one session and told me that she paid $12,000 for a Life Coach Certification course. And I'm like, do the person, or do you know who started the course? No. Do they have a brand? Where can you see any success? You paid $12,000. Then it's a lot of other people paid $4,000 for two stay-at-home moms who ain't never had no success as a coach decided to start a coaching certification and they do Google ads so that when you search how to become a life coach, they come up on the homepage of Google. The same thing with ICF, the International Coach Federation. People think that the International Coach Federation has power when they literally have no power, no governing power, nothing in the coaching industry. But because of their marketing, when you pull up their records, they are a nonprofit organization. They spend $600,000 a year on Internet marketing. So they position themselves as an authority and they show up on the home page of Google when you search how to become a life coach because of search engine optimization. And they're paying so much money to be in that position so that you automatically assume they have authority. But you do not know none of the people who started the company, nor do you see any real world success. And the same thing from these people that we listening to. The people that we listening to, you got to understand when somebody got a fund, People who got money don't need a fund. People who independently successful do not start a fund. People start a fund because they cannot reach level of success on their own and they need to crowdfund the money to live their dreams. So they crowdfund the money because they know that their sales ability is going to get so much money that it's going to buy them a jet and it's going to buy them expensive, exclusive, half a million dollar, million dollar watches. That's what they know. And then they take that and they do the lifestyle marketing and they get you to buy into what they are doing the same way multi-level marketing works. That's why when you go to a multi-level marketing pitch, the first thing they show you is this couple or this person who got a big house on the water and a Bentley. They, they're not telling you the value of the company. They're not telling you the intrinsic value. And what this is really about. And the same thing, when, when my clients started getting into the multi-level market and selling the teas, I say, listen, you're selling a ingestible. And you're selling this ingestible to your people. I say, that's dangerous because you're not in the factory where they making this stuff. So you don't actually know what's being put in this. And you're selling this to your people and 10 years from now, your people could have kidney or liver failure. Next thing I know, the company that's selling the raspberry lemonade tea or whatever kind of tea, women who are RNs and pharmacists losing their job because they testing positive for THC because THC was found in the tea. And that's the exact same thing I was telling my clients is you got to be careful when you're selling something that can be digested. You're not selling a service. You're selling something that could be digested. So the people who started this company do not look like you. So they don't care, but they got all people of color doing this and selling these digestibles, these ingestibles. So now they don't care of the, about the quality of these products. They care about the money that's being made because everybody is being sold a lifestyle and everybody is being sold a dream. And we can't find a better way to make a living. We can't find a better way to make a living. That's why when I sell stuff, I'm going to tell you why when I sell stuff, that's why I don't have a funnel. 
That's why I don't have a lead page. That's why I don't have a drip schedule on my email. That's why I don't do anything that traditional marketing that internet marketers do. I don't do it like that because I don't want to look like them. And I in and, and my courses, they bare bones because I want you to know that you know that you know that you want this course. That's why I don't have a long thing. And that's why my refund rate is far beneath 1%. My refund rate is like 0.001%. Because when somebody buy my course, for one, they already feel like that they just robbed me. I want you to feel like you're stealing from me. Because I would rather undersell and over-deliver than to oversell and under-deliver. And so that's why, me personally, I won't even pay more than $1,000 for a course if there's not a tangible return on investment. So the course is that going to be more than that. It got to be a, a strategy that you can make money for the rest of your life. And that's why I created my mentor.life so that people, when they take my course, they have somewhere that they can go to be introduced to clients. And because you might not get a client, that's why I only make it $20 a month and $200 for the year. So that if you try it for one year and you don't get booked the way you want to get booked, you did not cash out your 401k. But there are people like this right here that we talking about. My daddy went to a book publishing seminar that they said they were going to have Les Brown there. And this is how they play on the, the, the black culture. But see, Les Brown, his brand started to you know, go down. So he started letting these a bunch of white men use his name. And these white men went around the country using Les Brown name. My daddy and my cousin went to this seminar and my daddy told me that these white men was up there in the front of the room and they kept saying, we're going to have, a, you want to hear from Les, Les going to be coming out soon, but we want to tell you about this opportunity he say that they signed these people up in this room for $50,000 to publish their book. Do you know how much it costs to publish a book? $1,100 to $1,500. I've been self-publishing books since 2007. These people was charging $50,000. My daddy say they gave the people in the room a strategy and had them had the phone line set up and had the strategy set up for them to call their 401k and cash out their 401k and sign up for this course, sign up for this book publishing package for $50,000. When every one of my daddy books that I don't publish, I don't publish his books from $400 on average, $400, 400 to $1,100. They was charging people $50,000 because people don't know nothing. Because they did not take the time to, and I think it was Black Card Books. It was Black something. I remember that was in the name. And they, people don't take the time to Google to see what stuff costs to really get out there and see. And guess what? Les Brown never came out. And my daddy say it was a line of about 30 to 50 people signing up to pay $50,000 to publish their book. And guess what? A man said a study, he said less than 2% of authors sell more than 2,000 books in a lifetime. In a lifetime. And I know it to be true because I got millions of followers online and I ain't sold a million books. I ain't sold a million books. I probably done sold 100,000 books out of millions, out of having three and a half million followers online. Books don't sell like that. But see, this is the scam on the black dollar because the black dollar and this is what I'm trying to tell you all right now. And black women need to be careful as well, because when you turn on your TV right now, you are seeing so many commercials with black women in the cast. The reason why is because black women are getting degrees and starting businesses the number one demographic in america in degrees and new businesses so now every company all of a sudden 
after all this time treating black women like maids that's like the movie the help after all this time of stepping on the black woman head stomping her head in stepping on her neck now you see a black woman in every single commercial because the companies want to fake empower black women and now when you watch the commercials they putting a black woman with a white man to subconsciously tell you leave your men your men is trash like donald trump told y'all black people what do you have to lose you living in the ghetto your schools is terrible that's what donald trump told y'all basically told you nothing so you ain't got nothing to lose and that's what the commercials telling black women your men trash that's why we finna put you on this commercial with a white man pay attention to what i'm telling you now so take your money and take your degree and take your success and go on to another race with it because we don't because your race stay together you finna have too many of y'all y'all finna have too many strong educated black folks when my wife got a master's degree i don't have a degree but because of her love and support because of her holding me accountable i was able to build what i built and i wouldn't have built it without her but what now the media is going to try to do is try to break that up and say, no, nah, degree holder, don't be with this non-degree holder, this, this, this man who looked like you. No, nah, don't do that now. Don't do that now. Go over here and get you a man of another race. And he could be Asian, he could be white, but we do not want black on black. And, and somebody says a lot of black men, white women, same thing on the other side. And they showing that now on, on the TV. Same thing. But it's all to divide and conquer now back to the subject at hand with these gentlemen that's popping up i'm gonna tell you what they do they're doing long-term plays and they plan on you and they make you feel you know a certain way i follow i followed the guy um gary vaynerchuk gary v and it was shows that is taken in um jova g god bless you now it was shows that that was taken podcast and kept putting every podcast putting gary v on them gary v on there gary v on there, gary v on there, gary v on there. and they he was on the breakfast club and he was saying listen go get you something out your closet get on ebay and sell that on ebay i went on ebay and sold a 1300 dollars gucci watch for 700 dollars because i wasn't wearing it no more the person who bought my watch took a had the same watch that the band had been cut by his girlfriend for cheating i put this story together he showed a picture of the band with a clean cut in it somebody intentionally cut that because it's way too expensive way too firm to just have a clean it was like it had been sliced just with a pal scissor who gonna do that who is gonna do that a woman is gonna do that or a spouse or it could have been a man to somebody that they mad at he took that picture and said that's how he received the watch but because i had video of my watch putting it in there going in the package and i say that video i upload that on ebay and i got to keep my money every little thing i sold on ebay i the same type of scam i sold a 1600 camera for like 300 500 because i wasn't using it no more it was from my film company and the guy tried to send he sent a picture of a scratch lens and said that i sold him the camera with a scratch lens ebay let me keep my money so now here gary vaynerchuk on here giving all of these little tips out for money but not talking about that other side of it when we don't need to be selling nothing on no ebay when we full of gifts when we full of gifts we full of talents when you can invest in yourself but black people will take and put white people on a pedestal and i ain't got nothing against white people i got a lot of white friends but we got to start with the savior complex we got to start with the inferiority complex that we have and they will put these people on here talking to black people and they have no relation and this how when i because when i heard gary vanderson talking one time he said he grew up working in his daddy business his daddy owned a, a wine store what 
how many black people have that type of start to where they daddy and he said he took his daddy business from a three million dollar business to a 60 million dollar business he said it's out his mouth from a three million dollar business to a 60 million dollar business there is 0.001 percent of black people that can relate to that do you know what we could do with our natural smarts if we if we got a daddy that's got a net that got a store worth three million dollars and because the way they spend if the store worth three million that mean daddy a million now and that mean daddy sitting on a nice chunk of change can invest anything into the business anything and this what we don't understand this what we don't understand is that we take and we pedestalize and we be getting basic elementary information and we swear by it and this is the thing that how, how a lot of what how these black millionaires getting duped by these individuals is the, the way they getting duped is they greedy and that's how american greed exists the show american greed because they get greedy or they get desperate they get greedy or they get desperate and so here's the thing here come this man who telling you don't do your own investment for you and your family bring you and your family money to me and let me invest it for you because i'm smarter than you no bro not if you used to play with your nose i ain't never play with my nose i ain't never snort no powder i ain't never pop no pills so no you no you ain't smarter than me bro you're not no i'm gonna be in charge of my family money and i'm gonna invest my money and so now what he doing is it's lifestyle marketing but if you greedy, if all you think about is money, then you're going to fall for that lifestyle marketing. And I have so many people that I know personally, they send me stuff and they say, man, I know this person got it. I know they balling. I say, listen, you that you don't have to have money to get that stuff. People don't realize like people think that a G wagon. That used to be something a big deal a g-wagon do you know all three of my g-wagons i got into them with a ten thousand dollar down payment i don't had we didn't had three g-wagons one was mine two was my wife i got into all three of them with a ten thousand dollar down payment and a 550 credit score but people will look at a G-Wagon like that means this person got to be rich. No, you just go into the dealership and you put that you got an LLC, you put that you got a business and they're going to make that deal work for you because they could do that. They're going to make that deal work for you. I done had terrible credit because I let my credit cards report with a high revolving balance and it tank your score. And I go in there like that and walk out with a car. And I and I may have a, a interest rate on them, a higher interest rate, and to go and I just pay it down so that I beat all the interest. I beat the interest. They get a look, they get a couple months of interest off of me, and I pay it down. And then I'm in the equity position. And I sold one of my G Wagons. I had over a hundred thousand dollar equity in it when the market went up. When the market, the car market went up because of how I had and I took care of it. And so People don't realize that the same thing you could get a people get a loan, people get a payout, people get in a car wreck and they'll go and get a Rolls Royce with forty thousand dollars down. And they literally got fifty thousand dollars from getting hit in the bike and they hurt their bike, hurt their neck and did an insurance claim, got fifty thousand dollars and go get a Rolls Royce. And then they'll spend a whole month's check paying that car note and that car. They live with their mama. But they'll post that online and people think they got money. People think they got money. So somebody could say, oh, I bought this jet cash. People are taking believe it when it's jet financing. When you Google, 
jet financing, you got a whole page of financials that'll finance a jet for you. But somebody tell you they bought it cash, which that's like, okay, well, that's dumb. Because now, now you just told me how dumb you is. Because if you bought a $50 million jet cash, that $50 million that could have been deployed, you might not want that jet next year. So you could have financed that jet and just paid on it for a year. You might have paid a million dollars, but you done put 49 million to work and turn that 49 million into 98 million, into 100 million. And then you finance that jet or instead of doing that, you just get a jet car. Because when you get that jet car, you could buy 100 hours and it's going to average out about the same. It's going to average out to be less with a jet car because now you ain't got to pay hangar fees. You ain't got to pay maintenance fees. You ain't got to pay none of that. But this car, the jet ready for you anytime with net jets, right through net jets, you, you, you fractional jet owner. So when you tell me you spent $50 million on a jet, you just told me that you spend money like illiterate, financially illiterate people. And if you showing off to me your G Wagon and your and your Auto Mars and your Rolex and all that, you let me know you still spend your money bad. And one thing I know about people is just because you telling me you bought this out of your passive income and out of your I, that ain't true. I can't believe that because people online to tell you anything. People online can tell you anything, and this is what people don't understand is we believe anything we see not realizing that everything is smoking mirrors, smoking mirrors. So people mess around and, and see me in a Sprinter, see me in a Bentley, see me in a G-Wagon, and I'm up there scraping pennies together. I'm up there, I, I could be on hard time. And when they wouldn't know the difference. They wouldn't know the difference because of what they see. But don't realize that just could be my threshold that's my threshold for adversity. That's my threshold for me having friction. That's that's my friction ability. I can handle that. Where some people may be ready to take they all away. They done. And so this is the thing. You have to stop pedestalizing people. And that's why I tell people all the time. And even with the people that I coach one on one. I always tell people, listen, don't act like, don't treat me like I'm um, somebody different than you, like I'm better than you. Don't, don't do no fangirl or no fanboy. I'm a child of God. Hey, Tony, how you doing? Thank you so much for opening up sessions. This is what I want to talk to you about. Don't go into no long spill, you know, pedestalizing me, pedestalize. Don't do that. Don't do that. People, people come up and they be like, I was scared to speak to you. What? No, I, no I'm not a celebrity. It, you just speak to me. Yeah, you want to take a picture? Yeah, we take a picture. But what you need my picture for? I'm, I'm a child of God like you. So you see what I mean? That's why I try to tell people we got to stop pedestalizing people. Everybody human. But see, this is the thing. Is these individuals. I'm going to tell you something. When you think about race relations. And I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. What race likes another race better no race likes another race better so when you see individuals like a michael rubin and like a grant cardone and they start doing all of this stuff with black people all of the black rappers all of the black athletes all of the black multi-level marketing millionaires and they start putting these people on stages and they start bringing these people on it's not because they like them it's not because they care for them it's because they want their audience it's because they want their audience because they know that even if this person has some sense 90 percent of their audience do not understand what they are talking about and they're going to be able to pull the wool over your eyes they're going to be able to pull the wool over your eyes so they'll bring on the, the top woman. Grant will bring on the top black woman from multi-level marketing. He'll bring on the top black man. He'll bring on the, the top black boxer. 
the top black NBA, NFL. He'll bring these people on and the rest of them doing the same thing. When I see the guy Michael Rubin, I see him with more black people than I see him with white people. And you know why? And then the next thing you know, you'll hear a little baby in a song talking about all the investments he into because of the white men he hanging around. But he come from the bottom in Atlanta. So how much financial literacy do you think was really taught to little baby and to the Migos and to Gucci Mane? Like, like, yes, they can go out and get knowledge. Like Walker Flocker talking now and he talking knowledge now, but he done went out and sought that knowledge. He done went out and got that knowledge. And even that is still surface level. It's still surface level knowledge. And yeah, it could get real deep, but his brand had to take a hit. He had to go down. He had to fall out of the, the limelight to then start having some introspection to see like, man, I blew all of this money and I could have did this, this, and this, and this, and this. But see, one thing that these people know is they know that we come from nothing. And that just and this this the thing that 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 a lot of black people don't understand. And this is what I try to tell my athletes. Everything that I know, because I've been an entrepreneur since 22 years old, and I've been a full time entrepreneur working alone with no team since 27 years old. I got my cell phone op the Oprah Winfrey show. I wrote my own pitch to get on Oprah. I wrote my own pitch to get on the Tyra Banks show. I wrote my own pitch. I was my own publicist. I got a client that just paid a publicist for six or eight months, paid the publicist $10,000 or $8,000 a month and got zero press because we don't think that we have the ability to, to learn on our own. We take and we pay thousands of dollars to other people who don't know what they're talking about. They just put a price on it. And what I try to tell these athletes is just because you have made millions does not mean you smart. Making millions of dollars from bouncing balls or catching balls or throwing balls does not mean that you are financially literate. That don't mean that you understand business. You got to be out here in the trenches doing business. So guess what? I have Hall of Fame athletes calling me, Tony. Man, this new company called uh, Voyager. It's a company and they do like cryptocurrency. It's a cryptocurrency exchange. And man, they got a 9% return. And I'm going to put like, uh, I'm going to put like 2 million in there. And I'm like, hold on now. And I just, I don't even tell them nothing because they know it all. They're not calling to ask me my opinion. They're calling me to tell me to play. And I'm and, and I'm just like, bro, I've been out here. Like my right hand, my right hand is a billion now. My partner is a billion now. Like I'm I'm learning this stuff. I'm I'm right here. Like and I'm listening. I ain't talking that like I just know it all. I'm listening. I'm getting knowledge. And so. Here I am. Oh, my son outside my office. I guess he's looking for something. Wonder what he's doing. So when he said this, he go red flags go off. Okay, brand new company. You just not hearing about it. Okay, guaranteeing a nine percent return, and the main thing is cryptocurrency exchange. Cryptocurrency is volatile. We still learning about cryptocurrency. We still don't understand it. Real money. Is not in cryptocurrency yet. Warren Buffett ain't backing it. If Warren Buffett and them ain't backing it, it's still you got to tread lightly. Put what you can afford to lose. This just all just common sense to me now. I'm like, I've never heard of this company. They're giving a nine percent return. If they doing that, why are they called? Why are these white men calling you a uneducated black athlete? Meaning you have no college degree. As a black athlete, you have no financial, no financial um, like history or knowledge. So why are they calling you? Because these white men do not care about us like that to want to make us rich. 
Because if they put us on their same level, then we can't be used. So if, if somebody that's across the racial lines or even somebody in my own race come to me with something that sounds too good to be true, no, play by. I'm straight. I'm straight. I'm good. I'm, I'm going to keep my money. I'm going to keep my money right in that ETF. I'm going to keep my money right in that IRA. I'm straight. I'm not finna take my money and invest it into a cryptocurrency exchange. Guess what? They went to all other black athletes. Had them put up all that money. FTX, Voyager. They went to the black athletes, to the black celebrities. They had them. And, and, and the black celebrities that, and athletes that was calling me. You know what they told me they were about to do? Set up a call for all of their connections. That's what these men coming to do. That's what these people coming to do. Sometimes it's women. That's what they coming to do. Let me come get your audience. Let me come get all of your people and sell you this harebrained scheme. I have more athletes and black entertainers calling me about this new thing that they're doing. This new thing that they're doing is day trading. So now before I go on, them, them companies, FTX, Voyager, you look them up, what happened? Insolvent. They went bankrupt. They went bankrupt. Now the founders is facing prison time because people went to get their money and them people ain't have your money. Them people ain't had your money. People lost millions of dollars because it's like, listen, if somebody could guarantee you something, everybody will be doing it. So then I'm getting calls about this day trading, about this day. Hey, there's this fund. It's on the low. It's this big multi-level marketing person in it. This big multi-level marketing person in it. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you like right here, God bless y'all who do multi-level marketing. I don't trust you. I can't trust you. God bless you now. I ain't got nothing against you. I can't trust you though. Because if you gonna go and sell somebody else product or service, like it's the best thing since sliced bread, when God then gave you gifts on top of gifts, you need to sit down. You need you need to sit in my chair and let me talk to you. Because you could take in multi-level market yourself. You could go and multi-level market your gift, your purpose, your voice. You don't have to multi-level market somebody else product or service who's sitting at the top ain't even doing nothing. And 99.9% .9 of the people in the company ain't making no money. And so if you got this hustle ability to go multi-level market a somebody else product or service, you could be a multi, multi, multi millionaire with your own gifts, creating generational wealth for your family, creating a company that could be passed down from generation to generation to generation. You cannot pass down that multi level market because that's not your market. And it is also volatile and susceptible to the changes in the market and also the changes of the laws. Because the government only going to sit back for so long and let y'all keep multi-level marketing these sideways, backwards products and services before they step in. But they got too much going on, but they also going to sit back and chill because they collecting tax dollars off of y'all. But when you get to a certain point, they're going to come in and just in a stroke of a pen, they're going to shut everything you done built. They finna shut it down. They're going to shut it down in a heartbeat. That's why I tell people all the time, Build something, create something that you cannot be fired from. Create something that you cannot be fired from and then stack it and create multiple streams of income so that when one dry up, you got another that you could go to. That's why I have over 50 streams of income, meaning over 50 digital assets, things that I could promote one at a time, depending on the season. If the season ain't for this book, I'll promote this other book. If it ain't for that book, I'll promote this book. And I done wrote 17 books. And I got 58 courses because whatever the season called for, I got something that's my gift. 
that I'm not overcharging for, that I'm not overselling, that I'm not lying about, that I can move for me. And that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. So they going and they getting these multi-level marketing people and they say, mm, come on on here. And I'm finna get your money. I'm finna get your following. And they get you. And the next thing you know, and the same thing what I'm telling people is these people do not care about you. They do not care about you getting richer. They do not care about making you rich. They want to tell you how bad your situation is. They want to tell you how bad your race is. They want to tell you how dumb your race is, how slow your race is, but then don't want to tell you that that's why they're selling to you. And so now the new thing is, is with the day trading. Uh, is day trading multi-level marketing companies? And in in his day trading, and so I've been getting calls from people talking about, hey, yeah, there's this fund that people putting in fifty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars, and getting a million dollars within six months. And I'm like, I'm like, oh man, I'm like, whoa, I'm like, y'all believe that? Guess what? People went to putting in all their money. Went to do a withdrawal, money froze. Money froze. Money hasta la vista. Because you can't day trade your way to riches in a volatile market. When the market up and down, if the market down, the market down. You going to get lucky some days and then you're going to have a lot of bad days. I talked to my mentee. He got into that day trading. He gave $15,000 to one person who was supposed to be an expert. The person lost all $15,000. He gave $12,000 to another person. The person lost all $12,000. Listen to me. Don't nobody, include myself, know what we talking about. Get the knowledge for yourself. Know thyself. Protect thyself. Get thy wealth. Stop giving more than you can afford to lose. That's why my products, I make it so cheap because if it don't work out for you, I don't want you to be hollering about, I took your last dime, that you spent your last dime with me. That's why I make it dirt cheap. And people come to me all the time, telling you stuff too cheap, stuff too cheap. When I went to Grant Cardone's site, when I went to Grant Cardone's site, Cardone, University. He had courses on there for five thousand and ten thousand dollars. I say, wow. I say, wow. If I'm gonna pay ten thousand dollars for a course, Jesus Christ got to be the one who wrote the curriculum and teaching the course. That's the only person I'm finna spend five thousand or ten thousand dollars on a course. That's the only person. Other than that, I ain't got it for you. I ain't got it for you. No, I ain't got it. Mm -mm. Not about something that I can't see a tangible route to really make some money from. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. And so this is what people have to understand is this is marketing. It's just marketing. Like the guy, um, like the guy, Ty Lopez, same thing. Started bringing on black athletes, meeting up with the black athletes, bringing them, bringing them in. But all it was was marketing, selling a course. The internet marketing had millions of people buy that course, or hundreds of thousands of people, or thousands, tens of thousands, a hundred thousand buy that course. And it was, and he said out his own mouth, when he started selling the course, he didn't even have the last step to the course. He called the course 67 steps. He said out his own mouth, he didn't even have the last step. And these steps literally be put your right foot in front of your left foot. That's what be the steps. But you market it. You market it too. And this is what we have to understand. You got to start believing in yourself. You got to start getting knowledge for yourself. And you got to stop letting people bamboozle you. And see me, I see clearly. I see through people. I see through people. And that's why I move with authenticity. If I'm selling something to you, I'm going to tell you I'm selling something to you. I'm going to let you know I'm selling. And I'm going to sell it at an affordable price. And I'm going to have it a way to where you can get out of it. 
so the group coaching program that we're doing the growth club is 47 dollars 47 dollars a month and we're doing a call every month and then bonus calls and guess what you cancel your scripts anytime you want to and, and i'm gonna tell you why i'm doing it the reason why i'm doing it is so that the group can help each other pay for coaching meaning if i do one-on-one -on -one, i can't work with a hundred people if i'm doing one-on-one -on -one, because i ain't got but so many hours but if i do group coaching now i could work with more people and we could get disseminate the same information but people can meet other like-minded people in a safe space and and other people can share their knowledge and experiences so now you have a group think now you pooling the knowledge but it's at a rate to where you're not going broke and you getting the same type of information that you would pay five hundred dollars an hour thousand dollars 250 an hour whatever it be 47 dollars, and you're going to end up getting multiple hours for that 47 dollars. so this why this how you tell the difference between the real and the fake so when i talked to the guy um grant carter own friend who had a software he got the software he telling me the software fifty thousand dollars and 20 percent of my revenue so now i'm like so you're not gonna help me get these members on this membership site you didn't build this software the software built all you doing is just little bug fixes you maintaining the bugs so they ain't cost you that much and you got all these you got all these giants using this software and you get 20 percent from all these giants so why you need fifty thousand dollars up front who got fifty thousand dollars if they finna make you some money so i told them hey give it to me for zero dollars up front and I give you 30%. He said, All right. If you weigh 50, if you turn 50,000 to zero and there ain't no guarantee that you're going to make all this money, that let me know what it's worth what you just selling me now. Because that's too big of a discount. And the reason how I found out the strategy, because somebody called me about something and I happen to be sitting with the guys, these white men. And I'm saying, oh, this, this company asked me how much I'm going to charge for this post or for, or for this speaking engagement. He said, man, just give them a crazy number. He said, it's always best just to give a crazy number. As soon as he said that, he let me know his strategy of charging $50,000 to onboard onto this software. I went and got another software that I, that I have a referral link for in my How to Create an Online Course. The software is called Think If It. Think if it for the highest level, I got unlimited courses. I got 58 courses on, on TonyGasselAcademy.com. And I pay $99 a month and they get 0% of my revenue. They get 0% of my revenue. Now, through Think If It, I done earn over $2 million. Imagine if they was getting 20% of my hard earned work of me creating courses and me acquiring students. I got going on 40,000 students. So they would have got based on this other man model who was friends with Grant being they on the same mindset. I would have done lost from my family over $400,000. I would have done paid out over $400,000. Think if it has gotten 0% and for a software that is robust and any, I could do anything with that course I want to. I could go live in the course. I could I could put quizzes in the course. I could put PDF downloads. I could put audio. I could put unlimited videos. I got so many videos on Tony Gas Academy on this software and I'm paying $99 a month. $99 a month. Whereas here go this man with charging $50,000 and then $1,000 minimum per month. And then on top of the $1,000, 20% 20, 20 of your revenue. 
just a greed model. Just let me get everything at you that I could get at you. Let me squeeze blood out this turnip. When Thinkific, based in British Columbia, Canada, or something like that, Victoria, British Columbia, or something, I think they're in Canada. It's on the uh, West Coast. Um, they're on California time. $99 a month. Then, if you use my referral code, they give me something, a piece of that, like $30 a month or something like that. If you use my referral code to start your online course with them and sign up for the paid online course thing. So there was a time that I had a year on that Tony Gas Academy that I made over $900,000 and I paid $99 a month. Now, the guy I was talking about, Rashad, now, now, because I speak so much truth, these guys don't be calling me. But don't you think people need to hear about you using, you being able to use your own gifts, do no internet marketing, do no paid marketing, no paid marketing, and sell courses for a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, fifteen dollars, pay ninety nine dollars a month. And you only paying 3% to Stripe or PayPal for your transaction fees. So you had a 97% profit margin and you pay $1,200 for the year and your income is unlimited. You can earn however much you're going to market. And so that's what I, that's one of my main business models. Is taking what I learned and putting it into the marketplace, not selling just Google facts, but selling my gifts, my knowledge, because we are all created to where we can help each other and we can work a job and we can help somebody else build their dream. But you are a business yourself. You are a business. You can make a living from your knowledge, from your experiences, and from your gifts. But we taking our hard-earned money and we being bamboozled out of our money to let somebody else invest it for us because they made us feel less than and dumb and made themselves look smarter so we let them invest our money for us. And we being talked about our wealth we're being talked about our money and we do not see the agendas so it's a lot of times that men or women could feel like they being empowered and really they being bamboozled they being played upon and don't even see it and that's what you got to realize is that this thing getting real out here and you got to start asking yourself you got to ask yourself like man do this make sense do this make sense so what happened is when I started seeing this thing ramp up, what you got to realize is the real estate market changes drastically. When it goes through a change, it goes through a change. So the same people who got these real estate investment trusts, they getting your money, but they in the same market that you in. So it's not like you putting your money into their trust is going to be safer than you going and buying a single family or a duplex or a quad unit. It ain't going to be no safer. Y'all, the real estate market going to do the same thing to both of y'all investments. But here's the thing. You don't have access to the books. So would you rather have a single family property that's in your company name that you own, that your real estate investment company own, that you get to decide whether you want to refinance, whether you want to sell it, whether you want to leverage it, whatever you want to do with it, or have that money in control of somebody else's trust 
that they could take and sell the property that they done bought with your investment and they get profits off the top when it's not even they money in it. It's y'all money. It's the people money. And just because they went and found it, no different than you could have went and found it. Now, yeah, you can't get something that big, but it all is the same. Because, yes, it's a 300-unit apartment that the trust is buying, but you only, you only own this much of it. So, yes, the trust own a 300-unit apartment, but you own this much of it. Whereas you could own a whole single family and be charging $1,500 a month, and you coming home, or, or it could be a duplex, and your name on it, like this your residence, and so one side is yours, and the other side is somebody else, and you charging $1,200, $1,500. And so instead of you getting that dollar eighty-seven check that we did the math on, but you getting that $45 check a month, you could be getting a $1,500 check. And this is what people don't be understanding. And it's like, listen, if I'm going to go down, if I'm going to go down, I, I, I got to go down on me. I got to go down on me. So when, when the market started to change, we're in a recession. My mentor dot life, it's a lot of people who came forward $20 a month to be a coach on the site. So the site of taking go down, but guess what I had to do? I got to say, okay, I got to take the keys to this thing. I got to take the keys to it. So I had talked to the developer, say, hey, I need to have access to the Stripe account that's processing this. Because when stuff go to getting, when stuff, when markets go to change, I don't know, I don't know how your business is doing over there. So you give people access over stuff, when they hit hard times, They'll cook the books. You don't know what people going through. So if I got a coder and he got access to my site, he could take and set that stripe. He could take and set that stripe code up to where 90% go to my account and 10% go to his stripe account. And I would never notice it if I ain't in there inspecting what i'm expecting i think brian tracy said that inspecting inspect what you expect so i need to have access play by i need to have access but when you get in the buddy trust you ain't got no access you get the printed out documents they give you you can't log in you can't log in to the a master account with with viewer with viewer access I ain't talking about admin access to move the money around. I'm talking about viewer access. You ain't even got viewer access. You're going to get a reproduce printout or document of what's being done with this here money. So when money get funny, when money get funny, and you start to see that stress. So what happened is, here I was, I was idolizing, I was looking up to Grant Cardone and to um, Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm looking up to them because they don't look like me. And they talking this talk. They talking their big talk. And they got these big offices and they got all this staff. And so that's making me feel like a peon. That's making me feel like I'm nothing. That's making me feel like I'm unsuccessful. And I'm telling my wife and I'm like, baby, I need to have me an office with all these staff, man, because because Grant keep talking about solopreneurship ain't real. Solopreneurship ain't real. So here I am, man, I'm feeling like a peon, man, because that's a part of the strategy is they debase you and demean you. I think it was Grant Cardone who was on stage talking about $400,000 a year ain't no money. He can't live off that. He can't take his family off that. Do you know $100,000 for a black person in America is a dream? For a black person in America, $100,000 is a year is a dream. $75,000 a year, you rich. $50,000 a year, man, look here, man, I'm proud of you. You hear me? So it's this spirit, the way they're taking it, um, demeaning you, demeaning you. So I'm talking to my wife. I'm like, baby, I need a, I was, man, I need all these styles. They talking about solopreneurship ain't real. Solopreneurship ain't real. My wife said to me, she said, listen, you looking at these men 
and you don't know the behind the scenes. You don't know what they got to deal with. All the personalities they got to deal with. All the thievery they got to deal with. All of the overhead they got to deal with. And imagine when the market changed. Then guess what happened? Boom. That thing went to spread. People went to coughing. Everything got shut down. Next thing I know, I seen Buddy on YouTube panicking. He was panicking. We need to get back to work. We need to get back to work. I had to send all my staff home. We ain't got no staff in the office. It's unfortunate I had to lay off 42 people or 82 people. I told that to my wife. She said, uh-huh. She said, uh-huh. She said, she say, didn't I tell you? She said, didn't I tell you? But she said, now what has the virus done to your business? I say nothing. Ain't done nothing. Ain't have to lay off nobody. Ain't got no overhead. I'm working from the house. Ain't got no overhead. She say, see that? She say, you need to be teaching a course on how you work up seven hours a week and make seven figures with no staff. She say, that need to be the course, not hire 30 people, hire 100 people and delegate everything so you can look like and feel like a boss. She say, because you self, you self-sustainable. She say, in the middle of the pandemic, these people, businesses upended. They losing it. Now, because of this situation, they can't even collect rent. So now you feel like a peon because you ain't, you don't own an apartment complex. But guess what? Now ain't nobody got to pay no rent. So now they got to go out and get a loan. Now they got to go out and get this loan. And you sitting in here looking pretty. And then guess what? Because everybody was home. And so now people got time for courses. Now people got unemployment checks. People got stimulus checks. So now people looking in the in the YouTube, looking in the courses, looking in the books. So now my business going up. Now my business going up. And so my wife say, you see what I told you? Stop trying to be like everybody else and stop feeling less about yourself because you're doing things different. She say, how are you going to tell me solopreneurship ain't real if you touching seven figures? She say, how are you going to come from being a black man in America where your legs was broken and you was put 100 meters behind the starting line and told to race a white man in the 100 meter race? She say, so here you is being put in a situation to where you got the to where you got to race a hundred meters, but you starting a hundred meters behind the line. She ain't say all oh, this. This is my analogy with broke legs, and and you still become a success. Come on now, she say when your skin color is not an advantage, when who your daddy is is not an advantage, when you ain't got no advantages and you still can make it. That need to be talked about. But see, we don't talk about that. See, what black people need to be doing, see, black people marveling over other races. You ain't got to be racist to love yourself. Like, when I see the Indian, you know, the Indian from India, and the Chinese, and the Mexican, and the Puerto Rican, and whoever, when these people tell their daughters they don't want them to date no black man, I'm not mad at them. I ain't mad at them. Protect your, protect your culture. You know, guard your culture. Guard your belief system. Guard your, your family, your family lineage. Like, okay, like my people, like my people come from something different. Like we come out the trenches. We come out the bottoms. We come... We come out of slavery. So, yes, your daughter getting with one of us could ruin her life. It very well could ruin her life. It very well could change everything she believed. You might have her eating ahi tuna. And we might have her eating Popeye chicken filling up filling up them arteries with that cholesterol. 
So if you want to protect your race, you don't want your daughter dealing with no black man, I ain't mad at you. But then why we got to feel bad about ourselves when we want to promote black love, when we want to promote spend with your people, when we want to promote support black business, not, oh, why you can't support all business? Why do you have to support black? And I'm like, white supporting white. Asian supporting Asian, Jew supporting Jew. We, uh, every race, which we shouldn't have races, we should be a human race, but if they're going to divide it up, every race ought to be allowed to have pride in, they, in their lineage, in their culture, because it's the fabric of who they are. So we shouldn't be mad at being able to have any race or any color or any religion or any ethnicity or any nationality having pride in what they stand on. But see, what black people have to do is black people need to start marveling over the wonders of black people as well as marveling over the wonders of other people. But it's so many athletes and it's so many successful black people that will not hire black, that will not love their own, that will feel like, listen, I've been out here as an entrepreneur making it, doing clean business, as an entrepreneur making it. I ain't overselling nothing, I ain't scamming nothing, I ain't asking for no handouts. I ain't asking for no handouts. I provide a service or a product that has helped me and changed my life and I provide it at a discounted cheap price that get laughed at and frowned upon by other people in the industry. And do you know I have worked with over 400 NBA players as a speaker and a mentor. And I have, and do you know, not now one of these guys, when they in their career have come to me and asked me, Tony, how can I, dope conversation podcast, hey, God bless you, appreciate you have come to me and say, Tony, how can I build my brand off the court or off the field while I'm playing? But as soon as they done and that money start to dwindle, then they come to me. Tony, can you help me do this? Tony, and I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, hold on now, play boy. I still help them now. I don't say this, but this is how I be feeling. And they're going to hear me say this. Now, why if they watch this video, I'll be like, hold on now, play boy. Now, when you were popping now, when you were making millions a year, you was calling the white man. But now that you is no longer in the league, that white man has given you his butt to kiss. And now you coming to me and you want my services for free 99. Now you coming to me when your name done went down, when your money done went down, and now you won't help. Hold on now, how is this foul to me? When you was rich and making money, you made a white man rich. I ain't got nothing against white people now, but I'm just stating the facts. You made somebody else rich, but now that you ain't got no money or your money going down, now you coming to me. When all this time when you were touching M's, you ain't calling. But now when them M's looking like a a W and it don't stand for win now you calling me and guess what I go and make things happen I go and make things happen and I make things happen for them just to show them it was always all love that I'm still that, that you thought that I was fake you thought that I was a, a charlatan thought that I would be a scammer because we don't trust our own we don't trust our own. We got so much trauma. We got so much pain from, from street business. We don't trust our own. We go to somebody who don't look like us, and then guess what? They will do the same exact thing. And worse, instead of us trying to find people who got pride in a culture or race or religion or whatever it is that is like yours, 
instead of us finding those people that's going to do honest business, we just go to somebody else because of their race and then get them all that money. And that's what we have to realize. It's like, come on now, like, um, like Sharifa just said now, if Bernard Madoff to his own social circle and friends and family, he messed them out their money. Ain't nobody safe. And that's why I try to tell people. I, I remember I, I hit my home up. And I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you something now. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something. I was talking to a I was talking to a white man. And I know him. I know him now. Now he will take and go get loans to buy to do business to start business i sent him a loan offer for me to start a business a loan offer that i got to invest into a business and he told me stop taking on debt and i'm like i'm sitting there thinking what did you take on to build that hotel what did you take on to do all of this here investing you doing? But a lot of times, because it's us, people don't want to see black people get ahead. And that's what I had. I took issue with um, Patrick Bat David because he had Roland Martin on his show. And he's sitting there trying to argue with Roland as if Roland ain't got no point. Roland took and told this man, and Roland Martin took and pulled up on uh, y'all right Roland and telling him I'm talking about him in a good way. Roland took and pulled up the article of thousands of studies of, of studies of where black people having their houses appraised lower than white people in the same neighborhoods. And then here go Patrick Bet David. <clears throat> That's a lie. That's a lie. That is not true. That is not true. Show me the numbers. Now, when he go to pulling up his stats that feed his narrative, he believe every last one of them. But when there was a stat pulled up that don't feed his narrative, he all of a sudden, I don't believe it, I don't believe it, I don't believe it. And then he's trying to sit there and say, well, ain't y'all had enough time to, to come out of poverty? Ain't y'all had enough time? The, the, I come from a war-torn country. I come from this right here. And what he wasn't realizing, what he was saying is like, yeah, you come from another country on your own volition. Your family come over here and see this as a land of dreams. We ain't had that choice. Now, it'd be totally different if we was Africans, when we was Africans or and we was in apartheid, that we escape and come over here as a land of dreams. And, and the people who do do that, that's why they win. That's why we see the Nigerians come over here and win. The ones who come on their own cognizance. Who, who they come on they, by their own choice. We see them come over here and win. Any African come over here by their own choice, they come over here and win because you come in with a dream and you come in with a plan and you come in with a vision and you come in with a work ethic. But when you black in America and you born here, you born into slavery. Then you born into trauma. Then you born into Jim Crow. Then you born into systemic racism. So there is, it, it ain't no fair fight. It ain't even. You come out behind the eight ball and you ain't come in on your own choice. And you're not coming in as, oh, this the land of dreams. You coming in and you living in a nightmare. And then people out here, so soon as somebody discredit. The black experience in America, whether they black or white, I'm done with them. I'm done with them. Because if you can't respect my grind, if you can't respect my come up, if you can't respect my triumph, me overcoming and understanding that if I'm in, if I'm going to be enslaved for 400 years, 
Like, listen, listen to me. How somebody, how somebody for over 400 years, more than 15 men, women, and children were the victims of a tragic transatlantic trans transatlantic slave trade one of the darkest chapters in human history so now listen to me now listen to me now i tell people if you went through a toxic relationship it typically take us twice as long as the relationship lasted or or as long as the toxicity lasted to fully heal so it, that means if we went through 400 years of slavery, you got to give us a minimum, a minimum And we just talking about a relationship now. You got to give us a minimum of 800 years to see us in our fullness. Slavery ended in 1865. 1965 make 100 years 2065 is just gonna be is gonna be just 200 years how you gonna have somebody go through 400 years or something and then expect them to be equal and on the same level of production as the people who enslaved them that don't make no sense and that's what a lot of these people is arguing oh 400 years of slavery a hundred years isn't enough to get your stuff together to get your stuff together listen if your daddy was on cocaine for for 12 years how long you think it's gonna take him to get sober how long before you feel truly comfortable that he's not gonna relapse it's going to be the rest of his life. So this is what we're not thinking about. So anybody discredit the black experience and think that we all, every single person supposed to be all the way financially literate, all the way successful, all the way on this certain level out the blue without proper systems being put in place. And I'm going to tell you something. And the Jim Crow's laws to that 400 years time period. And then, like she say, civil rights in the 60s. Slavery still going on in Mississippi in 200. So this is what I'm trying to tell you. But see, this is the other side of that. The other side of that is because these people know that, they know that a lot of us have desperation. They know that a lot of us have desperation. So when these individuals come and they start to pray on the black community, it's because they know that a lot of black people are operating from desperation that will do anything to be rich, do anything to be successful, do anything to have generational wealth. They know that. So that's why they come and dangle that carrot. They come and dangle that carrot. And then they, and as you come in to get that carrot, they're just pulling it back, pulling it back, pulling it back. And then when you get all the way in the, all the, way in the cage, they're going to close that door on you. And then let you eat on that carrot, but that's the last, that's your last supper. That's your last supper. Cause this is what they're gonna do. They're gonna pull you into that real estate investment trust. They're gonna sell you this dream. They're gonna show you they jet. They're gonna show you they five hundred thousand dollar watches. They're gonna show you they cars. They're gonna tell you they bought it out of passive income, and they finna wipe you out. They finna get everything in your savings. They finna get all your money and they and they know because they already got the report that the market finna crash but they're gonna tell you that the market ain't gonna crash and they finna use you and everybody else that look like you and that's what i try to tell these multi-level marketers who invested in this in this man and these other people like them and then tell these athletes 
listen, y'all is float money. Because listen, if this, if if somebody, this this what you got to understand, and you got to be able to do the math. If somebody could get a hundred thousand out of you, if they could get a hundred thousand out of you to put into their real estate investment trust, but then you got a hundred thousand followers, you got a million followers. They get a hundred thousand out of you, but then they take a hundred of your people and get 50,000 out of them. Then they take another hunter and get 10,000 out of them. Then they get another hunter and they get 5,000 out of them. Then they take and get a thousand and get a thousand out of them. But the fine print say they get 8% right off the top or 5% or 10% right off the top. So now all you just did was just brought your whole audience to this real estate investment trust. All of your people investing because they trust you and you don't even know the industry or the market you're going into. You don't know the person that you're investing in and you ignore the checkered past, especially when it's a past that you got to beat that every single day. You got to overcome every single day. And so now you just made this person recession proof. You just made them recession proof, but they just took your last. So now you are not recession proof. So now what you realize is your network, black man, black woman, just brought in $10 million to this person fund. Out of that $10 million, they getting a million off the top. Then out of then out of the other nine million, they getting to play with that money, so they get to go buy a perceived asset out of the rest of that money, and then they get to sell it to a dummy, and then they get money off the top out the sale, and it was none of their money. But because you are just a fraction of this investment you just you getting that much but they getting scraped money off the top that ain't had to been tested ain't had to be ain't had to toil ain't had to have no risk no volatility they ain't have to go through nothing and they just eating they just eating eating so this is what you got to understand this is what you got to understand And, and the reason why, I'm going to tell you why. They invest in it because of marketing. They say a book is 95% marketing and 5% writing. The book that the book that Oprah producers read that I had wrote before they interviewed me on Oprah, I had all kinds of typos in that book. Me and my wife edited that book. It didn't even have real editing. It was the title and the cover and the fact that I wrote a book that helped me get on national television, globally televised, global global television, back to back shows. They not invest in they invested in marketing. They the same sales tactics that got them into multi level marketing, or got them into these other harebrained scheme ideas. These crypt investing in these cryptocurrency companies, investing in these people who so-called day trading their money the same tactics that got them into that is what get them into these funds these trusts real estate investment stuff that's all it is but see the thing about it is is when you know this what this what i don't understand about people this what i don't understand about, about black people with money you know your money done been funny so if you know you didn't look like millions and you did it off fraud or you did it off scamming or you did it off illegal activity or you know that you didn't had a count in the negative, but you still got a Rolls Royce, you still got a big house, but you know you didn't almost file bankruptcy. When you know that you done seen your behind the scenes of how money work, 
then why would you look at somebody else showing you a shiny object and believe that it's real? Like, listen, I'm going to tell y'all something. Let me, let me help y'all understand this, okay? I want to fly on a private jet. So me, what I do is I Google anything I want to do. I, I look up how can I figure out how to do what I want to do. So this back in the day, this is like 2015. I Google um, private jet chartering or something like that. I Google some how to fly on a private jet or Uber of private jets. I don't know if Uber was out, but I Google something and this company came up called Jet Smarter. I go to Jet Smarter, they got an app. So here go this genius, then started this company, then started this app, and they were selling memberships for $5,000. They sell a membership for $5,000. When they first started doing it, they were selling for $10,000. They wanted to be kind of premium. One enough people signing up. They'll sign up one year, they don't do it the next year. So the market started to change. They, they weren't making them enough money because now they're bringing in all these investors. They're raising all this money, but they ain't cashing out. They ain't making no returns. They ain't making no money because people signing up as a membership, but ain't nobody booking no jets. Everybody just taking, the, taking advantage of what they had called empty legs. So they got into this network to where when a plane is being repositioned for a rich person who finna book the jet, if it's going from Atlanta to New York because a New Yorker is about to take that jet to the Bahamas, they got to move it from Atlanta to New York. So they put that flight into the Alp and they call it an empty leg, a hot flight. You get to get on that jet for the cost of a, a normal flight. They were selling seats for like $300. So you buy your seat for $300 and now you own a jet by yourself going from Atlanta to New York. But when I signed up, the membership was $5,000. Now that same jet had I had paid for that would have cost me $30,000 or more for that flight. So now when I'm on this jet and I take a picture on the jet in 2015, Everybody looking at me like, man, what Tony E, what, ooh, ooh, my goodness, man, hey, he got private jet money? Do you know every single person I talk to? I'm talking to millionaires because I was working in the NBA as a team life coach for an NBA team. I'm talking to my players about Jet Smarter. None of them had heard of it. They literally dropping fifty thousand dollars to take a flight on a jet, and here it was. Jet Smarter had hot flights, empty legs, going from their city to L.A. to New York to Miami almost every day, every other day. They could have spent five thousand dollars, then paid another three hundred dollars to get that seat and been on that jet. But see, listen, only people that was in the network for the most part at first was, was just all white people. But then they started lowering them prices and they started marketing to black people because then that's how they ran up that 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. Then they started cooking the books. They stopped doing the hot flights because they realized they was giving people these flights and nobody was chartering the planes and everybody getting the, you know, flick up on Instagram like they got private jet money. When they want spending private jet money and see this is what i try to tell y'all once you start getting out here and you start to understand that money be funny and that you cannot believe what you see nobody should ever be able to sell you with lifestyle marketing and i'm gonna paint a picture to you i don't do lifestyle marketing I don't know. I just told you, and I'm telling you this out my mouth just to paint this picture. And it's still going to be people that's, oh, ah, ah, ah. Ah, Tony, guys, all you do is brag. I'm, I, I used to watch your channel because you was humble. Now all you do is brag. I'm telling this to make a point to you. Okay. I want you to understand this. 
I done had two Maseratis, Gran Turismo. That's the most expensive Maserati. I done had three G Wagons. You hear me? A Bentley. Uh, convertible Mercedes. Wide body, red eye, Hellcat. Never once, one time on the video that I did for men, man to man, you seen my, my red eye. But never once have you seen me sit on the hood of my car, sit on the hood of my car and say, do you, if you want a car like this, if you want you a G-Wagon, if you want you a Sprinter, if you want you a Bentley, buy my course or invest into my real estate investment trust. Never once have you seen me do that. And the reason why I own lifestyle market is because I don't want to sell nobody no dream. Because I know that I got into that car nine out of ten times with bad credit and no down payment and a high interest rate. So I'm not finna sell you on a car to buy a course like Ty Lopez did standing in that garage with that Lamborghini. Ty Lopez had a rented Lamborghini. And I know it's Lamborghini. I say Lamborghini on purpose, just like I say Amalams. I know it's ambulance. I just like to talk how I talk. This man had a rented Lamborghini in a Airbnb garage. Did a video from a iPhone 6. Talked to him, an investor, and got somebody invest to invest in internet marketing and literally start making a hundred million a year and the note and you know how i know that he ain't had nothing when he did that video because when he actually started making money and he got something he started showing you everything he started going in he now he in the house now he in the pool now he on his basketball court now he's showing you so i said now if the inside of your house nice why are you going to shoot a video in a garage with the dough down? That don't make no sense. Because if you got a Lamborghini, that means you ought to have a home office that look amazing. So why not sit down in, in your home office with, with a thousand books behind you on the bookshelf and do the same video? But he did it for that Lamborghini because he knew all of the people believe in lifestyle marketing that they're going to say, oh, I want a Lamborghini. This course is only $67 and I could spend $67 and learn 67 steps to get a Lamborghini. Oh, I'm on it. And then that's how the come up happened. And that's why I don't do lifestyle marketing because I don't want to get it like that. I don't want it like that. And that's how you got to recognize that stuff as red flag. That's why I don't do MLM. I don't do multi-level marketing because when they show me the pitch, they showing me houses on lakes and boats and cars. And I'm like, okay, like, okay, they got it. But now what y'all going to do when, when the, um, the, the, the FCS or the SEC, I mean, when the SEC come in here, and to look into all this here business. The man y'all just showed with the house on the lake finna be living in the lake. Finna be diving in the lake. Out of stress. Because the SEC that came and shut down this here with y'all running. So now what we talking about? You see what I'm saying? And this is where we have to get to this place. Is we got to stop being greedy. We got to stop being desperate. We got to stop believing that somebody else better than us because they look like they got more than us. Anybody can lose anything. And once you understand that, that's when you realize it. So this is the thing. When I go to see influencers, when that business go to changing, they be done said something that they about to get canceled. People will take that last little bit and they'll gamble. They'll say, you know what? I'm finna, I'm finna take this hundred thousand, this one million, and I'm finna try to hit a home run. I'm finna try to hit a home run with it, and that's when they'll go dump that money into a situation like what we talking about. 
and then they find the real truth. I'm telling you, I done stayed the night. I done stayed the night. I done been on planes. I done been on trips with people that don't look like me, that I thought was cool with me, that I thought wanted the best for me, only to find out that they still see me as an end. And then what, what Grant Cardone talking about, this man talking about he won't, he won't, he said on, he talking to Patrick Bet David, and he just another version of it, Patrick Bet David. He, Grant Cardone on the video that that's circulating, he talking to Patrick Bet David, and he talk, and he shake Patrick, slap Pat hand, talking about, I just got the license today to say the N word. And but before that, he said, I need a brother to tell me that I can say the N word. And then I seen another video of where he talking about the black man, the black kid knows him because he talks to him and they talk in simple language. He had he kind of stuttered a little bit because he wanted to say we dumb it down for the blacks. But he worded it as. We talk in simple language that they can understand. We don't use no complex vernacular. And let's see. So on one video, you want the authorization to call me the N-word. And you know what I'm finna start doing? Street terms. We talk in street terms. I'm like, is that cold for saying the N word? But he wasn't talking about that. And then and he used the V word, it was like vernacular, but he said something else. I say, wow. But that's exactly what they do. That's exactly what they do to look like they un to try to make people think that they understand what we done been through. What we done lived through. When I remember a white man told me, he said, Tony, you know, I got a friend who he go to the car lot and he just pretends to be broke. I say, a white man? He said, yeah. I say, if I go to the car lot looking broke and crying broke, they're going to let me walk right off that car lot. I have to go to the car lot looking like I can buy the car lot or at least buy a car that's on the lot to even get any service. I done, I done been there where I ain't have nothing and they treat me like I'm Casper. But now I pull up in something foreign, everybody run out the building. How can we help you? How can, can I help you with anything? I'm like, whoa. I'm like, whoa. And somebody say, yeah, he was basically saying that that's basically what he said in so many words. It was basically saying like we, we dumb it down for them so that they could understand us and so that they'll rock with us. And then because of that superiority complex, because of that savior complex, because of whatever all that and our inferiority complex, I mean, we, we fall right into it. We fall right into it and give our last dime. Cause at first it, they didn't want the business from black people. But what happened is, is after they get all of the white people, They'll get all of the white people. And after they done tapped all of that out, then they realize this is a whole nother market and need people touching millions now. Now they start to see black folk touching millions. Now they, they like, man, man, that's money I'm missing. Man, let me change up this language. Let me change up this language. And then Patrick Bet David, he's sitting there with Grant Cardone instead of him saying, no, no, you can't ever say that word. He's saying, yeah, you just need a stamp. You just need somebody to, you know, to stamp you. Listen, I got an Asian homeboy that sells jewelry. They be saying the N-word. I don't like when they say the N-word. And I'm going to start telling people, like, listen, bro, we had to pay a price for that word. I don't like when black people say the N-word. And I don't like even with the A at the end. I don't use the word. I don't use the word because it's just too much pain. It's too much pain where the word come from. It's like you can't. It's it's honestly the word is like the R word. It's like imagine if you went through the R word, and a lot of women know about this. The same thing what they trying to say with the N word is is the equivalent 
of like the R word. So imagine women just walking around, just who know who done been through this, and men who done been through this, and they just, yeah, yeah, I'm finna R you. You know the word I'm talking about, R A P. I ain't talking about rap. There's one more letter on the end of it. And, and imagine trying to desensitize people to that word who done been through that. That's what we do with the N-word. And all it is is it's ignorance. It's just, it's honestly a lack of vocabulary. It's just, you need to find another way. I ain't said that word, not now time on this. And I got a license to say it now. So we think. So it's like, that's a trick of the enemy. Because a lot of the, almost every single person who used the N-word, that is black. Still got a level of trauma in their life. Still in a level of calamity. Because every time you use that word, that word has power because of how it was used. You cursing your life. When you talk to your homeboys and you use that word, you cursing them when you say that word. And, and to be honest with you, that is why so many white people get offended by the word. That's why they get offended by the word because they they understand what they mean by that word. And that's why they won't say the word unless they get a, a, a stamp or an approval like what Grant was saying he won't is because they know what come with that word. But today we live in a new society now. So like my son, 15 year old, his friends, his white friends, they say the word. We was in an airport and the other team that was going, they maybe was the team right up under him. The little white boys were saying the N word. And, and, and I, I was about to, to blow up the spot, but I just, I said, no, I'm not going to be that dad. Because I know my wife and my son, they would be very awkward. They, they'll be upset that I said something. So I said, I'm just going to sit here and just chill. But everything in me want to tell them, boy, hey, hey, don't ever in your life say that word again. Because you're going to say that word around somebody and you're going to lose every tooth in your mouth. And I just know the way that privilege is, they would have went to their daddy. He told me he's going to punch me in my mouth. And I didn't even say the word. I was talking about Niger, the country, because I was doing my history work. And then he threatened to kill me. And then my son would have been kicked off the team and I, and all that. So I just, because I done, I done seen that stuff play out. So I ain't say nothing. And listen, but it's like this. It's the audacity. It just like old, um, it just like uh, Joe Biden. When he told whoever that was that if, if you vote for Trump, you ain't black. And it's like, whoa, so you feel the audacity that you could take away my right of choice or who I want to choose. That, then that ain't diplomacy then. That, that ain't diplomacy if I got to choose you. This ain't, that this not a diplomatic society then if I got to choose you. You see what I'm saying? Uh, somebody said, do you believe all white people are racist because of human nature, self-preservation? I don't believe all white people are racist. For one, I believe everybody have some type of, you know, bias or may, you maybe could call it prejudice, but it could just be a bias. And the bias may not be something that is something that they are seeing it in a negative way. They just could have preferences, but the ones who are, the ones who are racist, it's out of, I believe it's out of fear. And like you say, human nature, self-preservation, I believe it's out of fear of thinking that this group of people, because when you look at it, and this is why I say black people need to marvel at black people. In addition to just marveling over other races, black people need to marvel over our triumphant spirits, over how far we've come in so short of a time. And we still dealing with a lot of racism, a lot of discrimination. 
because it's still a human system. It's kind of like this right here. Why can't we buy a house? Why do you think we can't buy a house just based on an algorithm? Why can't we put our pay stubs, our bank statements, and our credit score into a system and receive funding? Why do we have to go to an underwriter? The reason why we got to go to an underwriter is so the acquisition of land can be controlled. Because to the letter, what you have to have to qualify down to the letter is written in such a way that half of white people won't qualify for a house. But because of it being an underwriter at that bank, that person gets to choose if they want to approve you or not for the loan. So being that we have humans in this place right here and being that we got to check a box on our race, this person now has the choice of whether they want to stick to the letter of the law or whether they want to make an exception. So if it's somebody that they know or that look like them, uh, we're not going to worry about that today. Will I, I, I? You know, technically it has to be this right here, but you know, I'm, I'm in this position. I can I can do what I want to do. <laughs> Yet to be. But then you come in there and they don't like the fact that you're in a better position than they in, and they working at the bank. At the underwriter, they, they'll sit there. And sometimes it'll be black people too, but they they trying to please they boss who is not who don't look like them. And they'll sit there and every level. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not gonna be able to do it for you. Just like that right there. Just like that right there. And it's and they make it extremely hard. Like, listen, I got a bank that I got a bank that they see me. They see on the account that I got with them, one of my accounts with them, they see the transaction volume. They see what it is. And they still want to prove me for certain type of uh, transaction, for certain like uh, home equity on this or equity on this property or this right here on that. They still will make me go all the way through the ringer. When they see I could easily afford that, that little payment, but they'll stick to that letter as if, like, wow. Like, you see this right here. I got this 100 times over, and I move that every month 100 times over, and you literally got me jumping through hoops. And as I'm the one time I had a Hispanic man, then the next time I had a young white guy, both of them talking down to me, condescending, kind of like saying stuff as if I don't know what it means. And then I had to all, and it made me mad. So then it made me kind of get a little attitude like, sir, what you making a year, I'm making a month. Like, what are we talking about? And then, then I got the flex. And that ain't space I want to go into, but it's because of that, that treatment. And so that's what you have to realize. And um, Layla, uh, God bless you. Welcome to the blessed tribe. And uh, she said, I believe it's innate for many. They don't fight to help relinquish their unfair advantage over blacks. We've been fighting for reparation, but they can't get Congress, them and rep alike on board. And that's that's deep. You know, like I seen a post of the day from uh, Little House on the Prairie where, where the little black boy asked, asked the white dad. He said, well, would you rather live 100 years as a black man? He said, you want to live to be 100? And the man said, yeah, of course. We all want to live. The white dad, he said, we all want to live to be 100. And he said, would you want to live 100, to be 100 as a black man or live to 50 as a white man? Man dropped his head and walked out the room. 
and our and and the white lady, I don't remember her name, but she always be checking the white people about you know the 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 difference between the races. And she said, How many of y'all want to be black? How many of y'all are trade places? And this is what I try to tell you, and this is why I want black people to understand. And yep. My coworker was telling me how our son attended a, a white private school and the only teacher he had problems with was a black teacher. Yep, I done seen that with my sons in soccer and in school. They'll get more problems out of the black coach or the black teacher because those people are showing favoritism to the white kids and then they take out all their pain and trauma and discipline on the black kids. But let the white kid get away with anything. And it's like, whoa, we're supposed to be looking out for each other. So we done been in sensual situations. I had to go off on a coach, a black coach, for that very reason. We done had to go off on black teachers for that very reason. And it's real out here. But this is what we have to start to recognize and realize and speak to. We got to start addressing that, that self-hate. And this is why we losing because we are, our self-hate, and our trauma is being played on. It's being played on. And people know it. And so I no longer am a victim to uh, the shame that a salesperson try to put on you to buy something. Like a man was trying to sell me, a different man was trying to sell me a Rolls Royce. And he talking to me like I'm dumb. Um, yeah, I would I would buy this right now today. I would pull the trigger on this right now today. I would pull the trigger. I'm like, sir, this is a five hundred thousand dollar car. What you mean pull the trigger on this right now today? Like this more than a house. It's houses cost less than this than this car. What you, what you mean pull the trigger on it right now? Like, what do I look like? But they think we that dumb. Like, I'm like, ain't no way in the world this white man will ever tell a white man who he knows is financial literate to make a decision on a $500,000 car in an hour. But they see us as that dumb because then they hear us on our music bragging about having to slip to the car because we just bought the car cash, which is the dumbest thing in the world. It's the dumbest thing in the world to buy a $500,000 car cash just to brag that you bought the car cash. When there is not a single white person in the world who buy a Lamborghini or a Rolls Royce cash, every last one of them lease it or they'll finance it, but they definitely not finna put down that much cash because they know they're going to get out of it in six months to a year. So now they would have rather lost 36000 and let that other 470000 work for them than to put $500,000 down and just be out of $500,000 just to drive a car. Instead, they basically just rent it and let the rest of the money work. So, so that's why I stopped doing down payments because I'm like, I'm like, hold on now, playboy. So if I put down $1,000, how much that's going to take off my car note? $18. So why am I going to give you a down payment if, if the bank is there to finance the money? So if they're going to finance the money, what's the difference? What am I going to put down $5,000 for? And I'm talking to a bank who got billions or hundreds of millions. What's the difference in $5,000? And it's like if they finance, they, they ain't making money because that's interest. So this down payment for your pocket, this for your dealership, this the 5000 that you overselling the car. No, I ain't giving me no down payment. I stopped doing down payment for that reason. I said, no, I'm going to put that, that cash right there. I'm going to put it to work for me. And that $1,000, I'll turn it into $10,000 using my gifts. I ain't giving that 1000 I ain't giving that $10,000. I'll turn that $10,000 to $100. You want, to, you want to sell or not? Okay, well, all right. I'll, I'll submit it. With no money down, if that's what you want to do, it come right back approved. All right, thank you. Go on about my business, just like that. And so we have to start marveling over our own smarts and gifts and wonders, 
and start seeing the beauty in ourselves instead of debasing ourselves and demeaning ourselves and then pedestalizing other races as if they smarter than us and better than us and they know more than us. Because I'm not finna let somebody tell me they didn't snort powder and I ain't never snorted no powder and I'm finna let them control my money, get them my money. What sense do that make? Somebody tell me they didn't struggle with addiction. I'm not finna give you my money and I ain't struggled with no addiction and I done seen what addiction do. And, and I'm listening to you and a lot of the stuff you say sound like you're still addicted to something. No, playboy, I ain't got it for you. I ain't got it for you. So here is what the man was saying is he want the license to say the N-word so that I'm guessing so he could get in with the community and be more, I'm guessing, relatable to the community to get more investments into his trust or to do more business. And I got I got clients who done paid tens of thousands of dollars to be interviewed by, by these people and to hire these people to do something that they could have done themselves to train their sales team. It's like sales training is, let me tell you what sales training is. Let me tell you what sales training is. Let me tell you what a salesman do. Patrick Bat David, his sales team. I wrote in through his website. His sales team call me like a woman that got some meat leg put on her, and it was the best thing she ever had, and she got to have it every day. That's all the sales team is doing. Is driving you crazy. They call, 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 call. Why are you paying $16,000 to have Grant Cardone train your sales team and give you salespeople when the only thing they are being taught is to call somebody and to wear them out? Until they finally just give in to the calls. That's all sales is. is begging. It's just follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. There is no science to that. There's a science to it, but it ain't rocket science. It ain't rocket science. It's stress science. And so you get to the point where you just like, man, man, just give me the course. Man, just give me the course so that you can stop calling me, man. And the person, the salesperson, they, they eat off commissions. So I, I blocked, I blocked one of the salespeople from uh, Patrick Bat David team the other day because the man calling me three times in a row. Like, bro, I'm, I'm busy, bro. I got something. I'm doing something. And then he went to text me. I've been calling. Ain't heard nothing from you. I'm like, sir. That is a clue that I am not interested in paying $30,000 for a one-on-one -on -one session. Please stop calling me. Like, my goodness. Like, that, that, that's the strategy? Just drive somebody crazy? It's like, I got to call the doggone law. I got to put a restraining order on you. Like, my goodness. And then they like, you know, well, yeah. If you don't, if you don't want to hear from me, just just give me a no. You know what? I let them waste their resources. I let them waste their resources because salespeople think that they so slick and they so conniving. I waste their resources. I go ahead and gaslight them. I go ahead and put them on a drip funnel. <laughs> I hit them by. I hit them by every nine in, every ten emails, every ten calls. I hit them. This a real live, uh, Denise. Come on, die. It's 12 30 a.m. My son's still up doing homework, 15 years old in the 10th grade, straight A student, taking two AP classes. He's still up doing homework. He ain't even showered from practice yet. Came straight from home, did homework all the way home, and then went in the room still studying. And so, me and my wife, we got to stay up till he finished studying. And then 
Yeah, it's a little late. That's why I'm still up though, because my son's still up doing homework. So I'm working too. And then my wife, she be doing her laundry and doing her straighten up and doing all her stuff. So we all out doing our thing. And the baby boy, he sleep. I'm up still working. Listen to me. What I do with themselves, people, because they think they smarter than us. I spring them all the way out. I spring them all the way out. Uh, yeah, still thinking about it. Give me a call next Wednesday. <laughs> I sometimes I just I say, okay, yeah, y'all want to be so aggressive, and y'all want to dangle a little carrot for me and my people to bring me in your little trap, to bring me in your little funnel. Well, I'm finna bring you right in my little funnel and spring you all the way out. And and it, sometimes I got the time. Because all they need is just one look. They need one little carrot. And the, what they taught is keep calling, keep calling, keep calling, keep calling. And they beg till they get a yes. My daddy used to tell me about, um, I think he said, the, the, the old lady and the unjust judge or something like that. And it was a story. I don't know if it's from the Bible or not. But he said the lady, she just kept going before the judge, kept going before the judge, kept going before the judge till the judge eventually say, woman, listen, I'm finna give you what you want so you can leave me alone. And that's exactly what themselves people be doing. So listen to me. To the to the blight influencers out here, to y'all athletes, and somebody could screen record this last little part. And the influencers, to y'all athletes, to y'all influencers, to y'all people who corporate people with money, stop getting finessed out your money. Learn how to invest your own money. Start your own trust. For your family, for your own LLC, for your family, and you get the knowledge and you invest your money and you have assurance and agency over your money instead of putting your money in somebody else's hands for them to invest for you. You know, a, a, a guy from a billionaire family told me, he said, don't ever hire a finance manager or like a wealth manager that you give money to and they invest for you because when you do it he said unless you got 10 million dollars and you go into the top firm in the world he say just do normal simple investing because when you hire one of these wealth managers you all you doing is paying for their family to live and then I heard Tony Robbins say that just off the 1% that the wealth finance managers charge, he would have lost $600 million over the, over the course of his lifetime based on his investments. So he basically was saying he went and got the knowledge for himself and got into certain vehicles, certain investments, but not to where he paying somebody, to where they getting a piece of his money to, to do this stuff. And so this is what you got to understand. <clears throat> yeah, hey, I'm gonna tell you. I, I see, I see through stuff. Siobhan say Grant one of her favorites. And he could be amazing. But the thing is, is when you become a slave to that money, you get you get beside yourself. You'll sell out, you'll do anything. You get beside yourself. And then they'll have these conferences and all these conferences is I went to one one time that a guy was doing in Orlando for $300. All he do is put people on the stage and they just they give you a speech and sell you a course. So you'll pay. I don't know number IULs. You'll pay. And I don't like the way the people be selling them either. I know universal policy. I don't like the way people be selling them. So a lot of times I don't get into stuff because I don't like the salesmen. I don't like the people who, who sell it and how forceful they be and how aggressive they be. I'm like, you do not care about me that much to get me into this policy. So what are you getting out of this policy? And why is you working so hard for this policy? Because you don't care about me and my family that much to keep calling me, calling me, calling me, calling me, calling me now. So let me go learn about this here. And so that's what I'm saying. Anything you hear, just Google it and read every article you can find. Go on YouTube, read every article you can find, and you get the knowledge for yourself. You get the knowledge for yourself, and then you make educated decisions. 
And I'm gonna tell y'all now to y'all influencers and all of that and people with some money, stop getting finessed out your money. Stop being greedy. Stop thinking that because somebody is of another race that they know better than you, that they smarter than you, that they could earn more money than you and really look at the system and how they earning money. When somebody asking you to put your money in their care or asking you to spend tens of thousands of dollars for their conference or their course, you got to really ask yourself, like, is this really worth that? And you got to look out there and see what else is out there. And then you got to be able to realize and understand like, oh, OK, so I never I never respected buddy money because I don't respect people money when they raise their money. Like I can't look at a pastor and admire his business sense or think that he's more successful than me because he has a Rolls Royce and a 10,000 or 7,000 square foot house because he gets donations. It's so unless he and he getting donations, and then them donations build him to a point to where he could his voice and his gift could build a following and build an audience, then he could write books and make money. But if a pastor just getting donations, I'm not finna look at him as no business savant because. Any of us could be rich if we just if we living off the donation that people are giving to God. If they giving money to God and, and I'm getting to get me a piece off the top, everybody going. Yeah, we all going to be rich then. But no, when you take a God given gift and you go and put it in the marketplace and you put a price on it and then you could sell that and people keep coming back for that gift or that service or that product and they buying it as a business transaction now i'm gonna respect your business but when you living off of just investments and donations and stuff like that like a real estate investment trust i'm not gonna i'm not gonna look at nobody and uh thing sharice i don't even know them people Don Peebles and Robert Smith. I don't even know them people, sister. It sound like Robert Smith might be the thing, might be the black billionaire, if that's who you're talking about. But I don't even know. Him. Look at that. Why need a bottom was selling course for 5k and tickets to conference for 10k? See, this I'm gonna tell you. I ain't got a course for 5k. And I ain't got tickets to no conference for 10k. But I'm gonna tell you what happened with what I need her. What happened is, is you get to a certain point and these people from other races come to you and they see your following and they give you this business model that they use. And they give you a business model that comes from a demographic that has a better economic position so they can afford those prices because of their positioning in America. And they will take that same model and give it to a black person who is serving black people who come from a totally different economic position. And that's what's wrong. And that's why I always tell these guys, the white guys, I always tell them, I say, listen, bro. We got, I respect what you do with your funnel and all of that and all that, but we got different audiences. We got different audience. Like my people, a lot of them behind the eight ball. So I can't take and take everything, take their last dime for a course that may or may not work. Like if I'm going to charge my people $5,000 for a course, it got to make 50000 Like it got to work. And, and I'm not going to overload them with so much information that, because, look, my course is bare bones and people still don't finish the course. So they give you these courses. They give you these courses that it got so much information, you can't even get through it. You open and you just feel daunting. It just feels so daunting. You just feel so drained. You feel so overwhelmed. You just you shut it down. And then and then you beat yourself up and you're like, man, I'm a failure, man. Man, I'm a failure. I suck. I'm not. I'm dumb. I'm I'm lazy. I can't even do this course. Because I'm so lazy. I can't even, I'm too dumb to even get through this course. And then, then they know that that strategy just worked. That was the strategy to make you feel inferior, to make you feel like they really gave you something. But it really was so that 
you will just give up with but, but you're not gonna ask for a refund because they didn't gave you 15 years worth of regurgitated information just all mashed together that's really how they even come up with this chat gpt because that's basically what they've been doing without the ai they just been mashing together a bunch of stuff and then putting it in a course and selling it to you and it don't even come from real life experience it don't even come from 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 real success so listen uh, we have to be more mindful and and i'm gonna tell you it's it's all it's all a play everything a play but you just got to understand what the play is and if you okay with being a part of that play so like with gary v he he just he focused on long term because his his aspirations is different so we never heard grant cardone say he come from a daddy with a three million dollar business that he took the 60 million like gary v say so in a lot of ways grant cardone could come from a scarcity mindset could come from a place of desperation whereas with gary v he could just give information and just give you something give you something and then take shots at people who selling courses because he don't have a course but at the same time you know but at the same time he's selling books so it's it's still you getting put on a mailing list to buy a product eventually it's just a long game some people doing sprint some people doing marathons but it's all the same thing and so you just got to under, ask yourself is the information i'm getting actually beneficial and that is does it apply to my life but a lot of times when it's coming from somebody who has no understanding of your life and you're struggling what you come from they giving you a they giving you a blueprint giving you plays to run that they got you running basketball plays on a football field and it just don't it doesn't work like that and that's why we really don't see the millions that have heard of these individuals we really the millions don't come up uh, the coach talking about Grant grew up in, in Louisiana, single parent house with just his mama. And as we know, any white person from the South, it's that's like a fish coming out the ocean and saying they never been wet. A white person coming out the South gonna have a certain view about black people that don't mean all of them racist now but i haven't met one that ain't got a view a certain perspective now they're not gonna tell you that all it everybody gonna say the same thing every black person every white person gonna say the same thing i'm not racist i am not black people oh i, I ain't racist mm, i ain't got a razor bone in my body <laughs> but anybody you get comfortable enough anybody you get comfortable enough you finna hit i remember one time a white homeboy called me and he say he called me drunk tony tony man you know i'm i'm, I'm at the bar and I'm, I've, I've got in trouble you know i said the n-word but let me tell you the context i said it in you know i said it like this am i wrong for that i'm like yeah you talking to a black man. You can't ever say the word. Never. But them true feelings came out. Them true feelings came out. So listen, I'm I'm telling you, you, you got to be careful. Hey, God bless you now. Somebody sent me a cash out. God bless you now. I really appreciate you. So now we done been on here three hours. I, I don't think I've ever done a three hour live. And a lot of times I look at people who do three hour four hour five hour lives and i look at them like they're crazy and i just be like boy man you really something really wrong with you yeah he's still my friend i just know where he at i just know where he at i don't i don't i understand people you know and i i just know where people at so i know what they expect and it ain't it ain't like friend like 
yeah, besties and, you know, hanging out every day and all of that. But I just know where people at. And, you know, I just take note. I done three hour four. Joy, now, Joy Wood, no, she be on here now. Well, if, I, if I did one, I did one. But I sure don't try to make a habit of it. I be trying to be out here 90 minutes. And I did a 10 hour Zoom for $25. Now, let me tell you this. Now, which one of them people? <laughs> That's how I try to tell y'all. We don't have discretion. I charge $25 for a course for a live Zoom. I can't remember what we was talking about. And I talked for two hours. And then I answered questions for eight hours straight. We was on there 10 hours. And it was a $25 course. Now, which one of them people going to sit on Zoom for 10 hours? That's why I try to tell y'all, if y'all look close enough, you're going to be able to tell the difference between the real and the fake. Because the real is going to be servants. And it's going to be a lot that a servant does that don't come with a cost, that don't come with a catch. And even when it is the cost, it's the bare minimum cost. It's almost like you buying it wholesale, not retail. You're going to be able to tell the difference. You're going to be able to tell the difference. Hey, but I'm tired, though. I done crossed it three hours. So you get that close, you got to go on and cross it. And y'all got to forgive me, but this one right now is like I'm, I'm coming to the place where I got to start speaking out more. Because, see, stuff like this come out, and I and with this little video circulating, and I've been noted. And then I'm seeing people come out and go to talking, and I'm like, man, so you so you couldn't tell. So you couldn't tell that the man low-key racist? You couldn't hear the undertone of how he talked down to us like we dumb, like we inferior, like because you play sports or you make music, you dumb, and he ain't got now degree, and you used to snort powder, and then here you is. Ain't never snorted no powder, powder, but because you black, you less than, you 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 financially illiterate, so you need to take all your hard-earned money and put it in his trust. And when I heard that come out of his mouth, don't, don't go buy a single family. Don't buy a single family home. That's, that's broke people, or that's this and that that's that's this this that's a waste of time to, you need to come over here and put that money into this trust because we're buying 300 unit apartments i'm like man so you really finna tell people don't take and get into a financial position to create some type of passive income and generational wealth that these people have control over Instead of saying, hey, buy you a single family first to get some real estate experience, to get some experience as a landlord, and maybe get two or three. And then after you get that, if you want to scale, then join us in this trust with only the amount of money that you can afford to lose. Because Yes, although I know what I'm doing and although we're going to do our due diligence and we don't plan to lose your money, there are no guarantees. So I can't guarantee you because something could happen and the market could tank tomorrow. So we could buy something for three million. And at the end of that year, it could be worth one point five. I mean, we could buy something for, for 30 million at the end of the year it could be worth 15 million. So half of that investment is, is lost. And now we got to wait for it to climb back up. And so. From 2008, we 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 ain't see the real, real, real heights until 2020, 2021. The well, everybody who really, really, really lost in uh 2028, I mean 2008, really, really made out big in 2020, 2021, 2022. But look how long it took for that market to get all the way back up. And then it got all the way back up. And yeah, when it was going up, you know, 2015, 17, 18, whatever. 
but then it went all the way back up. And then now what it's starting to do, it's starting to go back down. And now that it's starting to go back down, now the market's starting to change. So listen, get the hell knowledge in you now. And do your due diligence. And pay attention to these signs. And make sure you compare and contrast them. But hey, this Tony Gaston, let me see this now. Okay, um, Nicole, God bless you. God bless you. I appreciate y'all. It's late. I got to be up. I got to meet my, one of my... Um, Remodeling guys at 8 a.m. at Home Depot. Home Depot similar chat. But hey, God bless y'all and I appreciate y'all who showed little love and sent them blessings. I sure appreciate it. God bless you. We'll talk soon.